freaking overtime on us. You know what I mean? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Please. Loud and clear. And, you know, if we walk in the light, we're not going to give any gratification to the flesh. We're not going to give anything to our flesh or to the world. If we trust in the Lord and just keep walking forward, bro, when Jesus comes, bro, Ernie, I'm telling you right now, when Jesus comes, let me put it this way. If Jesus comes while you are still alive in your wheelchair, when Jesus comes, Ernie, and you, you got Jesus in your heart, when you see, when you see Jesus, when you see Jesus, Ernie, your legs, you're all of a sudden going to, your legs are all of a sudden not going to be numb anymore. Your legs are going to be ready to go. Your legs are going to be, you're going to be walking. You're going to stand up out of that wheelchair, bro. And then God's going to call you up and you're going to meet Jesus in the clouds, bro. You know what I mean? You're going to meet Jesus in the clouds. It's not going to be all about your legs because that's nothing to God. You know, but right now your legs are the way they are. Your whole situation is kind of messed up. You got your mind is working overtime on you right now, telling you you're not good and telling you you're not this. Don't believe in that. Don't believe in this. No. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Be not to your understanding. Acknowledge him and he will direct your path. If you just do that, and nothing else, bro. You're gonna make it to paradise. You're gonna you're gonna make it to heaven. Your wife's gonna go there. Your kids are gonna go there, and all things are gonna work together for the good to those that love the Lord and are called upon His purpose. Don't let the world get you down. Remember, the devil is a deceiver of the brethren. Remember. Jesus loves you, bro. And he says, I will never leave you or forsake you. And you are going to always be with God, bro. You know, don't let the world get you down. Don't let your mind take over. Fight the good fight, bro. And then win the race. And when you win the race, bro, bro we're going to get to go to heaven, bro. We're going to get to see Jesus for the first time. You know, we're going to get to live with him forever. And, you know, I have nothing to lose and everything to gain by just believing that. Do you understand me? So don't let yes, the sir. world get you down. Don't let the world get you down. Don't let your mind overwork you. Because my mind can overwork me big time. But I'm not going to let it. You know, God said to call upon me, Abba Father. He said to we 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 uh how's it go? We don't have the spirit of fear of bondage to fear, but we have the spirit of adoption where we cry out, Abba Father. I had to learn that verse, and every time Junior said that, said that to me. He taught me how to memorize this verse. I got this verse down, man. And 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 I have no reason to fear, bro. Because God is with me. You know? He'll never leave me or forsake me. You know? If God is for us, who can be against us? You sit Amen. on that right now, Ernie. Because I love you, bro. And you're doing good where you're at right now. Don't let your mind get you down. Don't let the devil get you down. You just keep going forward, bro. Thank you, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And what I'm telling you is reflecting on me. It's re re reflecting on Adolfo. It's reflecting on Gus. It's reflecting on... 
it's thank it's you. working thank on you, brother Lalo. Lalo is working on Junior. It's working on Robert. It's working on Richard. It's working on Tony. Hey, we got it going on, bro. Because when Jesus comes, bro, it'll be something you've never seen before, ever. And it's going to bless your life. All right, man, bro? When, when, when Jesus comes, you said we, we, we were going to go on the clouds. Man, I'll be flying by then. I don't even know legs. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> that's right. That's what I'm saying. That's what I hey, said, bro. bro. So, so, sorry to hear that. You said you fell off and you hit your neck. Who, me? Yeah. I broke my neck 10 years ago, bro. Oh, okay. Sorry to I hear that. I fell out of a, I fell out of a, I fell out of a back end of a 56 footer, you know, uh, tractor trailer. I fell backwards out of a, out of a trailer, mm -hmm. tractor trailer. And I landed on my back and I broke my neck. Eagles. I got a titanium box in my throat right now. I got four titanium posts in the back burning. of my neck. So, yes. Oh, wow. Damn, brother. Yeah, I got, You're strong, I got man. You're, more, you're strong. Hey, Ernie. Monday. Keep telling me that. <laughs> Go ahead, Lalo. How you been, bro? How you been? Uh, I told that hanging in uh, there, hang, yeah, yeah, but pretty much just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, you know, uh, I was, I was feeling the change, right? yeah. I was, I was listening right now, you know, and uh, you know, that that's good, you know, what brother Randy told you, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, I always find it interesting how it's it's easier said than done, you know, like we can say it, we can quote it, we can preach it, teach it, but when you're living through it, bro. You know, it's 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 a whole different ball game, you know, and and I'm telling you because, you know, that's how, that's how I was, you know, uh, and at times we, you know, I, I still, you know, like, even though, you know, we know God's word, we we try as much as we can to, to do, um, God's will, but, you know, we're human beings, bro, and we don't stop being human beings, and as long as we're in this body. You know, we struggle and we wrestle with things, you know, and, you know, um, sometimes it's hard. It's hard when you're going through it to to see things, to see things out of the box. It's easier for somebody else to come alongside and, you know, give you advice and stuff. But, you know, when it comes to us, you know, when it's like me, the one that's like, for instance, like right now I could sit here and tell you all these, you know, quote you all the scriptures, all the verses in the Bible. But then when it comes to me, you know, it's like, oh, you know, like we struggle, you know. So, you know, don't feel like you're alone, man, because, you know, there's other, you know, like the word of God says, you know, there's other, there's other brothers around the world who are experiencing the same trials, the same temptations as you are. You know, in other words, you're going through what you're going through. Or what you've been through, you know. Amen. But I'm, I'm I'm glad you're here, bro. Thank you. Well, I yeah. can share a little bit of, of of what it is. Okay, me being paralyzed, that's nothing. It has nothing to do with um with how I, I how I was feeling. The the um the reason I came to to the word was because I felt this thing take over my mind and my body and my emotions that. Yeah. I was being tortured in the inside of me. I was pretty much in hell. And when they say that, oh, you're going to hell, man, that used to get me really mad because I am in hell. I'm not, I wasn't talking about being paralyzed. It's because my mind, my emotions and my feelings and my pain that I was going through on the inside of me was hell. And that's why I, I that's why uh, I came to learn the word. So. Being paralyzed has nothing to do with the pain and torture that we go through internally. You feel me? And, yeah. and, and you guys are right, where the mind takes over and it starts overworking us. But it was more than that. It was like this thing, like um, 
I mean, pr pretty much just think of it like, you know, when you get a bruise and and then you press on it really hard and then you twist the body and then the mind won't stop attacking you. So you're feeling the pain, you're feeling the torture, you can't even poop, you can't even do much and you're weak and you and your body's really tense. I mean, like you can't even move. Get it? So I was going through all that. And me being paralyzed, it's a blessing to still be here, man. And it's a blessing to be in this beautiful country where everywhere we go is what you're accessible. So we are freely, you know. But um, this thing that took over the mind and 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 the and and the emotions and my internal dialogue, it's it was very scary, brother. It was very scary. And that's when I, one of the first steps that I had to do was to humble myself. I had to humble myself and start recognizing and start getting to know me. And I started learning the word differently. Like, for example, I, I, I can elaborate a little bit to where there's this verse where it says, love your neighbor like, like you love yourself. Well, in order for me to love my neighbor, that means first I need to love myself. So I didn't even know what love was, right? And then I learned me personally, that is my personal experience was that at least for me at that stage was when you love someone is you pay attention and you listen to them and you understand. Them. So I started paying attention to me and I started to understand me. And then I started to understand certain things within me that that started toning down a little bit a little bit a little bit a little bit yeah yeah we feel a lot better than when we started so and that's that's um calming the mind um recognizing that i was creating guilt i was creating anger i was creating resentment i was creating all these negative emotions within me. But I had to take responsibility and recognize that I was the creator of those emotions. And when I came, I didn't know that I was a creator of those emotions until I started analyzing that we create our own emotions within us. And when we keep creating, keep creating, keep creating, and the emotions take over us, ay, papa, welcome to hell. Because now I'm not in control. My emotions are in control. You feel me? But I wasn't aware of these, of all this information. So getting to um, otra que dice, <laughs> dice, God created you, created us in his own image. To me, means if I want to get to know God, that means I need to get to know me. Because if he created me in his own image, that means I need to get to know how I function, how I work. And to me, that's showing appreciation of his creation of us. Like, um, he created me, therefore, I need to get to know how I function. And that's me showing gratitude. Thank you for creating me because I'm creating a his image. So I, I look at things, different perspectives. And so pretty much know that I started to get to know me, starting to recognize where I was wrong. And how I, I created some of uh, the things in my own torture. And and our Lord Jesus says, the truth will set you free. So when I started confessing who I was, who, who I was, pretty much it would let me go. Get, get it? So it's like, for example, um, one of the things, like, for example, um. Uh, There's a there's a lot of characteristics of us that are not godly. You know what I mean? Like I was impatient. I was impatient, so I had to recognize I'm impatient. I'm vengeful. I was vengeful. Um, what else? And those all those characteristics that that are not godly was the one pretty much. I was, I was torturing myself for not recognizing. You feel me? Yeah. So, and and that that we're glad, that, that, we're glad you're here, bro. We're glad you're you're back, and 
You were missed. Thank you. Don't do it again. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's why I told Pastor because um, pretty much I'm fighting my own, my own, my own. You can we can call it my own inner demons, right? So there's 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 certain things that 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 I I, I had a different perspective of things, a different point of view, yeah. and. And pastor right now, and he called me and we chat a little. And then from there, I chat with my wife and daughter about little things. And hmm, I seen a different perspective I wasn't able to see before. So I was like, you know what? Síguele. Y aquí estamos otra vez. All right. It's like welcome a roller coaster. As many, as many times as you leave, that's as many times we're going to welcome you back. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That, that's how God is with us, man. So. Yes. And I understand there's a lot of us suffering, brother. But you know what? To me, the way I see it, and this is personal once again, the way I see it is, to me, pain and suffering was necessary para que me pusiera las pilas. Other than that, I would have kept being the same A, A, you know what, all, all along. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for my pain and suffering, no me pudiera las pilas and start studying, getting to know the word, getting to... Uh, Getting to start doing something yeah. about about it, because mm -hmm. when I when when it came, wow! I knew I was in trouble, man. I was in trouble, and no doctor, no psychologist, no help out there was gonna help you on the inside, because this is this this was something different. So it's only beautiful. you, aha! Uh -huh, only you. What's happening inside of you? You only know, and this is only uh, thing. So I started just reading a bunch of stuff, getting to learn this and that and that. And then I started picking up little things in there. And I was like, oh, shoot, I'm in a, I was in a big percentage where I was wrong. So I had to start recognizing where I was wrong and acknowledging it and accepting it. You know what? Yes, I was wrong here. Yes, I was wrong there. Yes, I was wrong there. And start changing all my perceptions. Just start changing the beliefs, you can say. Certain beliefs that I had, certain um, ideas that I had. And... Yeah, la llevamos. Thank you. You know, I was never there. We were never there for you, Ernie. When when you're going through all this this stuff, when we see you, we see Ernie smile on his face. You know, all happy and stuff. That's what we see. We don't get to see you going through all these problems and stuff in your mind. But uh, I'll tell you this right now. I've known you, Ernie, for what a few years now. You know what I mean? Three or four years at least. But ever since I saw you very in the beginning until now, I could tell that God has set you free. I can tell that you're free indeed. I could tell that you're stronger. I could tell by the words you say and the way you talk. I can tell that the Lord is molding and shaping you. I can tell. I, I I I remember you back in the day. Back in the day, you were cussing and stuff. You know, you were saying different words. You were you were following people instead of following God. You know, you were following what people said. You were following you know other other things of the world. And I can tell by the way you talk. You talk like everyone in this Bible study talks. We all talk. We all talk a little Spanish. We all talk a little English. But one thing we all talk, we all talk God's word because it's memorized. It's embedded in our hearts. So a lot of times we're, when we're talking, boom, we'll quote a scripture. God says this. God says that. He said to trust in him with all your heart. We, we, You, you say scriptures because it's your regular language now. Keep, keep, keep going. Keep pressing on yep. to the higher calling, bro. Keep, keep doing what you're doing because... You're you're fighting the fight with us. We're all fighting this fight. Amen. You know, keep fighting, yeah. keep fighting oh. the fight. And believe me, there is an end to this whole thing. I'll, I'll give you a next level, my friend. The next level is feeling it. When you start feeling the love, when you start feeling the love, truly feeling the love, when you start crying, when you start crying out of gratefulness, that's you're in the next level. I I came into the next level of that. Where wow, I just started feeling all this love happening to me. Pastor having a lot of patience. Here, you guys always been supportive, and always being there and not giving up. And you guys are struggling more than I. 
Look at Gus. Gus has it like, I think he has it tougher than us. And here he is still standing strong, you know? And congrats, Gus. Honestly, my my boy, the stuff that you've been through, that canijo. This is nothing. This is a piece of, this is like a little something what I'm going through. And you guys give me the strength to, to the strength and the hope to keep going. And you guys show, show me very, how, how to have a lot of strength. And thank you. And, by, and Lalo always using the right words to to go from scripture into my language <laughs> because that's what I tell pastor I tell pastor uh, sometimes scripture doesn't get to me can you give it to me in my paisa words or like my slang or stuff like that oh yeah and you guys do it and and thank you for that and aquí estamos thank you pastor thank you guys and keep it up Gus <laughs> good job my friend honestly it's very, very tough what you're going through. And here you are still smiling, still going through it. And he, he, he goes, he goes, he goes through it more than he smiles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I hardly smile. It, 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 you could ask my hey, wife. Hey, Gus. Yeah. Hey, so, uh, say that is my smile. This is my smile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. 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 Right here. That's my well, smile. Yeah. What, one of the things that I had to overcome was the fear. When we start going through changes and see, start seeing reality, this is real. This is it. This thing got serious because that it got serious. It's getting. I mean, it's serious for our brother Randy, and it's very serious for our, our brother, our, our, our brother. So, how yes. did you guys overcome that, our brother Gus? How did you guys overcome that fear? Trust in the Lord. And the fear just goes away? I told, I told Pastor, I feel good right now because my granddaughter was really sick. She had a high fever. What was it, baby? About 102? 101. But she was crying, crying. And he brought my daughter called me, Dad, can you come pray for her. Wow. And um, me and my wife went in there, and I laid hands on her and prayed over her, and boom, gone. I anointed her with oil as I prayed for her, and she was healed. Right there and right now, I told my daughter, God's still with me. They're still with me, even though I've made many mistakes in my life. But when you make mistakes, you don't go back to them. You just move on and ask God, forgive me. Keep me, keep thinking of me, Lord. Watch over me. Yes. Love you, bro. Yes, brother. You know, as we go into life, as humans, we, we make a lot of mistakes. And then we feel guilty. And that guilt is very strong in us and it and it disciplines us. And that was part of our part of my suffering that I was going through. Part of my torture. It's not even suffering. It was the next level where it was like torture, right? But then God also gave us and, and but God also gave us the power to forgive ourselves mm -hmm. because we can only learn and grow. And it was an experience that we had to go through. And the important here is that through that experience, I learned this. Thank you for that. Did it cause me some pain and suffering? Yes. But God also gave us the power to forgive ourselves. For the things we, for the things that we have done as long as we recognize what we did wrong the forgiveness goes through but if we don't even recognize what we did wrong then we're still there you know what i mean no, so i don't think gus recognizes you know that because i still can't forgive him for that one time that we went to the boat house <laughs> and we were ha and, and we were drinking a couple beers and he says here let me buy you a beer and uh, he bought me a glass of beer, a glass of beer, and he bought himself a pitcher of beer. And he was drinking the pitcher of beer, and I only had a glass in my hand. I was going like, 
doesn't this look odd? Here, you're drinking the whole pitcher of beer, and you gave me only a little glass of beer? I haven't forgiven him for that. That is love, my friend. Why? Because here, this is bad for you. Randy. You take the little one, and I take the big one for you, man. Randy, I, got yeah. all those, I got all those beers free. You, do, do you see what I'm saying? No. I never they paid. gave him a free pitcher of beer, and for me, he gave me a little <laughs> glass of beer. That's my buddy. Basically, that was he was telling. Basically, he was trying to tell me who the designated driver was going to be. You know. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when I say recognize, my friend, um, was I have recognized that I had allowed my anger to take over me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. So I need to have self-control. That was the recognition I had to learn. And hey, we can uh others mature at a younger age, and other matures a little bit more older, you throw mass older, and some don't even mature, they go through life. But part of maturity is being able to recognize the lesson that we received, or else the lesson is gonna come back right to us, and it's gonna keep coming back to us. Until we change our ways. The Bible says that, right? The word says, change your old ways. So um, the, the reason I say recognize is bringing it to your awareness. That I had to bring it to my awareness like, oh, shoot. I need to take control of my, of my anger. How do I do that? Because I was creating my own anger. You feel me? So I had the power to dissolve the anger. I, I wasn't aware of this. So the old way of thinking was this way that was creating anger. So I changed the, the way of thinking to this and that produced empathy for the person, putting myself in that person's shoes. You know what I mean? So guilt, learning. guilt, guilt is one of the one, one of the main ones and resentment. We are very, we are very resentful. Nos aguitamos por poquitas cosas. So re, uh, guilt, resentment, anger. And what was the other one? There's another one. There's like uh, four. Oh, disappointment. Cuando nos aguitamos. Oh, me aguité por esto. Oh, this is disappointment. So that way of thinking was, was part of my torture until I learned to ask God for forgiveness. And then once I understood this, I understood that. So like, okay. So then I started forgiving myself for that. And we got to move on. We can't stay stuck in the past. Vámonos. That's all, that's all we're here for. We're here to learn. We're in this world to learn. Nobody was born learning. And, and to me, the, the torture that I had to inquire was, the, was the, the, the motivator for me to start learning. Thank the, God you're learning, bro. <laughs> I'm gonna where did Lalo go? <laughs> I'm still here and snoring, so I don't he's think he's asleep. No, he his camera's not on. No, he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. There's uh, no names there. It was uh, Lalo. I was gonna tell him he had a great testimony. I heard the whole thing. It was it was awesome. Anybody else hear it? Oh yeah, yeah I heard it. I thought it was good too. It was pretty good. Yeah, the song was good too. <clears throat> what song? Yeah, it was. The song in between the testimony. Huh? The song in, be in between the testimony. You sing? The song. The song. Yeah, in, in between the testimony, there's a song. Oh. Mm -hmm. Then you didn't hear the whole thing. <laughs> no, I did. I heard the whole thing. I don't remember no singing. You heard the whole thing, then you got to hear the song. There's a song in, be in, in between the break. Hmm. Just like Randy. Maybe, Randy I by, maybe by I father. Hey, Gus, did you hear my testimony? Oh, oh you, the one where you got into prayer and all that? Yeah. I did what? When you got into prayer? No, you You're didn't hear my every testimony. Day, every day, every day, huh? I did my testimony the other day. Oh, no, I haven't heard it. The pastor hasn't Yeah, the pastor it sent it to He sent it to me. It. It's in the group. Oh, he did. I didn't get it. I don't have it. 
I don't think so. Yeah, I sent it to you personally. All you have to do is tap on the link. I mean, tap on the. It says Randy. It says uh, Big Randy Vasquez testimony. Now we need Ernie's testimony. Mm. No, I haven't heard anybody's. No, I start. You got to look for it. <laughs> it's, it's still in process. It's, right. still, in, it's still in process. You gotta catch Ernie on the corner somewhere. You know, in his yeah. wheelchair on the corner with a sign that says free food. <laughs> unless, unless unless you're talking about these ones that are like with Pastor or with and his is like a video. No, the one with um the one that says how from above. Yeah, no, I, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah, one of them is a testimony. Yeah, I have this one. Yeah, help from above. Oh, where to go? Right yeah, there. yeah, that right there. What does it say? That's one of them. Okay. Yeah, what does it say? Put your get your glasses. Yeah, I see it, Lalo. This is brother Lalo. Okay, that's Lalo. Now look at Randy's. Oh yeah, Randy's. Randy Vasquez. I didn't see that one. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that one. I'll listen to it. Then you said Ernie. No, I'm just saying I need Ernie's. Oh, oh. I heard yeah. brother Adolfo's. Adolfo was wow. I haven't heard um, Randy's, but uh, uh, is it in the group chat, Pastor? Yeah, scroll down. And you'll yeah, see it. yeah, it's right there. Okay, I'll check it out. Yeah, the song's good, and yeah, there's there's a song in between the testimonies. Let huh. me come back after the song. You know, you know, it's such a trip, you guys. Is I did my testimony, and and Pastor Junior said to pick out a song, and I didn't just want to pick out any song. Pick your, your grandma's so, song. Yeah, but what's so Grand funny is uh, oh no, that was my dad's. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> what was so funny was the song that I picked. I wasn't really paying attention, so I know the spirit was moving in me. But the song that I picked collaborated and went together with my testimony. It's funny how the whole thing kind of turned out. And uh, it was a blessing. The song went together with my testimony perfect. Huh, Junior? Like a glove. It fit like a glove. Amen, brother. I'm gonna send you guys. I'll, I'll, I'll listen to yours when I when I get to it. Hey, I'm gonna send you guys a flyer, Gus. I'm sorry since you're in Arizona, unless you can fly back to Orange County on the uh, 14th of September. But we're gonna feed the homeless in Garden Grove off of uh, the 22 Freeway and Beach Boulevard, right there at the Walmart Shopping Center, Ernie. It would be cool, Ernie, if you could be there. The 14th? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be in um, Minnesota. Bahamas? Oh, Minnesota. Okay. Huh? <clears throat> well, I'm coming down on the 17th for my granddaughter's birthday. Going to Disneyland. Well, why don't you come down on the 14th? You should come to the outreach with us, man. We're just going to be awesome, bro. We're going to minister to the homeless. It'll be one of the best things you ever saw. We're going to bring food, barbecues, and stuff. We're going to bring a lot of clothes. I, not, and, I'm, you know, like, go ahead, I'm, not, I'm not bragging, but I, I we did do that. <laughs> I just, I'm out here now. I out know. here. I, I wish I could do it here, too. You leave me. Yeah. I, I have a friend that did it. He, he was like, the pastor told him, no, no. I told him, hey, you feel it in your heart and the Lord's put it in your heart, you go do it. And he did. He was taking the homeless off the street, beating them, reading scripture and bringing them to the Lord, bringing them to, to church, the bringing them to church. And he loaded the church up Let's with homeless see. people. I'll try and lower it down. I'll try and lower it down. That's good. Brother Randy, you didn't say the key words. There's going to be big pictures out there. 
<laughs> is there going to be a pitcher? <laughs> What's a pitcher? No, because earlier he said that he was resentful because you kept a pitcher and you only gave him a glass. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> I, 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 I don't remember that, but I believe him. Yeah. I always drink pictures. People, people that don't share too much never remember the good stuff. Mm. <laughs> that, that's all That's all in the past. I'll give you my testimony. I love, you, I love you, bro. You know, you're my brother. I love you. Bro. I'm all right. I'll get you a picture of soda next time. No, I don't drink soda. It was diet, but I have to drink light, like squirt, seven up. My oh, baby, yeah, seven ups or squirts, no dark sodas. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And right now I go I went through what was it, baby? I went through uh, the stuff for my kidney. Yeah, I went through all the testing and everything. Found out what what blood type I was, and I got one more test to do. And, and the surgeon says it looks good. I'll be getting his kidney. And then I just go to dialysis to wake up that kidney. And then um, be back to normal. Thank God, hopefully. Yeah, that sounds good, man. Well, I mean, I'm just not, 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 not going by to dialysis. <clears throat> That's not normal. And it's weird. There's so many different people there, young people. I'm like, man, I'm 62. These kids are like 20. And they're already in dialysis. Huh? Wow, 20, son. Yeah, 20, 25. Young kids. That's when I got married when I was a kid. 25 years old. Wow, Gus. I love the fact that even though you're going through hardship, you the way you spoke right now is like, man... I live longer than them. I was blessed with more time. I was with less. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I love that. I love that. That you still have. You 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 see the. The good in the it. goodness. The goodness. Yes. Yeah. My wife reminds me though. <laughs> when I try to give up, like I oh, know you know what I'm out of here. I don't want to go here no more. It, it's frustrating. I tell you that I'm frustrating. But you know, you know, um, I can share a little bit of of, of, of what it is, and and you guys can see 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 how you guys see it. Um, but I'm seeing that we are suffering and we're going through hardship because we we are hurt internally. There's a lot of hurt inside of us, and we don't know how to release this hurt. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Hay mucho dolor adentro de nosotros que no sabemos cómo procesarlo. How to grieve it. We 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 don't we 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 don't know. And that's what I'm focusing on because once I started checking myself, I was like, oh man, I have a lot of pain inside that when I was young, I was taught to shut up, suck it up, men don't cry. And then, and then what was the other one? And then the other one was, you cannot show any love because love can get you killed. You know what I mean? It depends what kind of areas you grow up in. You know I what I mean? Up, I was a, I was, church all my life. Mm -hmm. so, so we didn't learn to express our emotions, and because uh, because of this, th there was a lot of anger inside of us. And we still don't know how to process. We don't know how. To, sometimes I have seen because I'm seeing it on me that I didn't even know how to grieve. You know what I mean? Todo eso it's, I ha we have to learn as human beings that whenever we we change environments, we 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 go through a breakup, we go through any you can say traumatic event in our lives. We intend to toughen up and, and, and not to show any emotion, but no, sooner or later that emotions come come back because they stay in us. We don't know how to process them out of our, our out of our systems. Just a heads up. Thank you, Pastor.
Yeah, I think that you. Mande. You leave it at the foot of the cross. Because the Lord says, cast your cares upon me. And it also tells us in the book of Matthew, this is to, um, uh, como se dice este, um, um, it tells us to, como se dice, um, I have to try to think that one scripture, Matthew 28, <laughs> como dice, um, it tells us to, oh, take my yoke upon me and learn from me, for my yoke is easy. Yoke is easy. easy. I think that's one of Randy's scriptures, right? Yeah. Yoke is easy and the burden is light. I mean, that's where the Lord tells us to, you know, give everything that you have to the Lord. To cast. What does it mean to cast? Pretend you're fishing. And what do you do? Cast. You cast. And that's what the Lord says. You know? And that's why I say that's why when I when I pray I pray it and I, I leave everything at the foot of the cross. That's that's my way of saying leaving it at the foot of the cross. Mm. God, you know, let God let God deal with that situation that you're going through. And it could be a financial situation, it could be a health situation, marriage situation. Um, you know, whatever you're dealing with, the Lord says, "Hey, cast your cares upon me. Cast your cares upon me." Because it's too heavy for us to carry. Yeah, you know, that's why God says, you know, to um, give our burdens to him. You know, I'm going to give you that rest, but you have to come to me. Come on. You know, a lot of times we have too much baggage in us and we just, or like, my, I just put a good example. My, well, my cousin listens to this, but, <laughs> but he says, Primo, you know, I just feel bad because I, you know, I talk to him and I pray with him and he says, I just don't know like going to God because I only come to him when I need him. <clears throat> and, you know, that's the problem. You know, the problem that God has in the sense of us is, is not coming to him. <clears throat> you know, he'd rather come, right? he come to him when you need him than for you not to come to him at all. Right. Because he wants, you know, he wants to be able to, to be in that situation. He sees it because that's what we're going to learn tonight. <laughs> we're not going to see that. Nothing happened. <clears throat> You know, and it's a vain thing not to not to consider God's uh, sovereignty. It happens by he sees everything. He sees everything that happens in your life, everything that takes place. And uh, that's why Psalm Psalm one twenty six has a lot to do with you know uh, what we're talking about right now. <clears throat> and once again, nothing happens by chance. You know, nothing nothing happens out of coincidence. Um, God sees everything. God knows everything. Um, yeah. But yeah, it, okay. So we'll we'll get into Psalm 127 for tonight. <laughs> hey, did you guys? Uh, did you guys get that flyer by any chance? Yeah, I saw it in the text right now. Yeah. Okay, I sent it to you guys. Right. Just in case you guys, we got some time. You know, maybe an hour to go minister on the corner. We're right there, man. We, and we bring it too, man. We bring the gang. The whole motorcycle club goes and everything. It'll be about 20 Harleys out there. We minister to the, the homeless. We bring music. We bring our words. And, and we go right to the neighborhood of all the homeless right there. And we minister to everyone we see. We give food out, hot dogs. We make hot dogs for everybody. And... Uh, we just have a big party right there for about four hours. So thank I wanna, you. I want to I want to invite all the men of God ministry to come out and, and help support this deal. I tell you something, Ernie, for you to be out there in your wheelchair and everything, that would that would pierce some hearts. I, I believe that would uh, help a lot of people out. I'm sad, you go, man. No, no, I, I I get you, and the reason I'm laughing is because, mira. Este todo paralítico aquí, and you guys are complaining, you guys are walking, and you guys are complaining. Come on, stop complaining and, and go on, you know what I mean? Yeah, believe it or not, I, I do see it that way that when when I go to places and all this, it's because I see it I see it in other people where other people are worse than me. Like I see people paralyzed like from the neck down and their hands are like, man, that makes me feel so blessed. So I was like, wait a minute, if I'm 
feeling like this, when I see people like that, then people that are more independent than me, I wonder how they feel. You know what I mean? So, yes, yeah. you are right, brother. And That's everybody's right, inspiration to everybody. Monday? You're in, you're in your situation right now. Because that's what God wants you right now. He wants you like that. You have, you have to reason. get your attention, Ernie. Monday? You have to get your attention. Because you were listening. Oh, yes. Loud and clear. <laughs> that's right. He just allowed it. He, he could have prevented it, but you, you wanted to keep doing what you were doing. You were being Ernie. Gus was being Gus. Randy was Randy. Pastor was pastor. It was who he was when we were out there. Me, I didn't have any issues. <laughs> yeah, ahora, help me, help me. <laughs> FT just, FT just wanted to jump me <laughs> first day mm -hmm. I got there. <laughs> I was only in ninth grade. What did you say? <laughs> F2 wanted to jump me. I was only ninth grade. But I was bigger than all of them. <laughs> you, got, you got to wait for your testimony to say that. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you got to wait for your testimony. <laughs> you can hear all that on his testimony. testimony ain't that great. <laughs> Whatever you Pastor, do, Gus, don't mention my name. <laughs> Pastor wants exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm not going to tell anybody about me dropping you, Randy, okay? Oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> And did you get Adolfo's testimony, brothers Adolfo? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he gave his. P P Pastor, right. can you put it on the group chat? That way I can listen to all, all of them. They're, out, they're right there on the... They're there, me. They're there Ernie. Help from okay. above, from above uh, ministry. You can look it up. Help from above ministry, all right? Yeah, there's, yeah, they help from a, a ministry with the Bible on it, with the Bible, with the picture of a Bible. You mm -hmm. tap on it, they'll take you to our channel. Mm, awesome. It, Thank it shows you. everything, all the testimonies, everything that we've been doing. Okay. I'm um, saying, Pastor, oh. do your Bible study. Right there. Yeah. Okay. We, well, Adolfo's going to teach tonight. So let's welcome Adolfo Garcia. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll have Adolfo pray us in, right? Amen. Um, you know, we'll have... Huh? More introduction. Who? Introduction. Yeah, yeah, we got to do the introduction. Yeah, yeah. We'll have uh, Gus, you have the introduction, right? Yeah. Okay, so Gus will do the introduction. Hermano Adolfo pray us in. I'll introduce the ministry since we've been recording. Um, so the the uh, title for tonight's message on Psalm 127 is the imparting soul of wisdom to his son Solomon, right? Once again, the imparting soul of wisdom to his son Solomon. That's the title for tonight. Uh, the reason for that the title, and I'll, I'll explain to you guys as to why, um, once we start, um, as to why I'm, I I titled the message tonight like that. <clears throat> este, but yeah, but before we get into it, let me let me introduce the ministry, and then we'll, like I said, we'll move forward with uh, Hermano Adolfo, then, then Hermano Gus. So once again, Psalm 127, the imparting soul of wisdom to his son Solomon. Uh, so once again, we want to welcome each and one of you to the Tabernacle Meeting Help from Above. <clears throat> it's the uh, the verse for ten, the verse for the Tabernacle is Psalm, I mean Revelation twenty one three. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, "Behold, the Tabernacle of God is with men, and He will dwell with them, <clears throat> and God Himself shall be with them and be their God." Right? Once again, Revelation twenty one three. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. <clears throat> they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. The tabernacle that Moses was told to set up while wandering in the wilderness represented the dwelling place of God on this earth. But this tabernacle of God 
is the reality of his presence. And he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. The essence of God's desire and man's purpose. God's desire is to live in close fellowship with man. And man's purpose is to be a people. And to God. Right? And the next verse we have is Psalm 51, right? Psalm 51 is the uh, Psalm of Repentance by King David. Uh, here we see David, God's chosen king, sin by having relations with another man's wife, Bathsheba. But God has something to say about David's abuse and power, right? Because he was a king. And he sends his prophet Nathan to call David out. Second Samuel chapter 12, Nathan uses a story to illustrate the seriousness of David's sin and it's effective in calling David to repentance. There are still repercussions from his sin. But because Nathan spoke the truth, David repented and avoided bringing further punishment on Israel. Right? So he wrote Psalm 51. 10 through 12, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with the willing spirit. Right? After the sin with Bathsheba, he says, Lord, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Right? Lord, give that back to me. And sustain me with the willing spirit. Right? May the Lord sustain you and may the Lord sustain me throughout the week with that what? With that willing spirit. Right? The spirit is willing. But the flesh is what? Weak. But the flesh is weak. I uh, get to get on. <laughs> next we have is uh, Acts chapter 16. Uh, the story of the Philippian jailer. With Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas were thrown into prison for preaching Jesus in the street in the calle. Um, but the Lord sent an angel and shook up the prison. These chains were broken. And the Philippian jailer, upon seeing that, cried out to Paul and Silas and said, Sirs, hey, what must I do to be saved? Right? And they responded in Acts uh, 1631. They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Right? Amen. Just believe. In the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. <clears throat> right? Is any among you afflicted due to alcohol, due to depression, anger, a divorce, drug abuse, death of a loved one, mixed marriages, abandonment? Know that God loves you and waits for you to respond. Hey, and to respond to the call, right? God says, Hey, I have a calling, calling in your life. Right? Experiencing God's call may be a process, but answering his call. Requires a definite decision, right? A delayed obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Hey, but what? Do I, how do I know what my spiritual calling is? Well, you know by what comes naturally to you and by what God blesses. How do I know what my spiritual calling is? Well, you know by what comes naturally to you and by what God blesses, right? Your ministry, your ministry is found where you've been broken and your testimony is found where you've been restored. Right. Once again, your ministry is found where you've been broken and your testimony is found where you've been restored. Amen. Uh, that's uh, that's who we are. And that's what we're about. Amen. We're going to move forward with uh, El Hermano Adolfo. He's going to do us a favor and pray us in for tonight. Amen. In our hearts. Dear Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, giving you thanks and praises for your love and kindness and for your mercies. We just thank you. We praise you. We worship you. And we adore you, Lord. We lift up our lives before you. We ask you blessings may be upon this teaching tonight. Thank you for all of the encouragement and the words of wisdom that you have given us already. I thank you, Father, for your son, Jesus Christ, who gave up his life for us so that we might have eternal life with you. Holy Spirit of the Lord, welcome Come into our hearts, lead this teaching, anoint Pastor, Pastor Junior, and anoint everybody else, Lord, that everything they might say from the mouth of anybody, it might be from you. I pray that you will minister to each and every one of us, that we might be able to put it into practice, and to remember, Lord, that there is one purpose and one purpose only that you have us in this world, and it's to preach the gospel, to be fishers of men, and to tell everybody there is going the wrong way, to take and consider their ways that they might repent and find eternal life. 
with you, the truth, the way, and the life. Help us, Lord, to be willing to sacrifice nothing we sacrifice. Lord, it is our duty. It is our pleasure. It is our, it is our life, Lord. You take our lives. You give our life for us. Now it's time for us to give it back to you, Lord, where it belongs. Use us the way you want us to be. We're willing to go with you, Lord. I pray for healing for the ones that need healing. And help us to remember that as long as we're available for you, you will keep us busy in this world. Help us to keep going in the way that you want us to go. We ask, Father, that you will see to it and those hearts that are need, you yes. press it, Lord. You peace and everything else that you have for each and every one of us in our families, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes. Amen. You almost said Pastor Chuck, didn't you? Almost. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard you. <laughs> yes. You think called Pastor Junior Pastor Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll move. He don't talk like he don't talk like him, nor does he sound like him. <laughs> he kind of looks like him in a way. <laughs> With a bald head. It's me. Oh, okay. Sorry about that, I guess. <laughs> All right. Church of the Most High God, we are moving forward to the next chapter in the book of Psalms, which is chapter 127. For tonight, and the title of the message, my message is the imparting soul wisdom to his son Solomon. The Hebrew scholar titled it a song of excess of Solomon. My King James Version is titled a song of degree for Solomon, a song degree that a de song degree, the degree of elevation of accents, meaning the act of rising upwards. Psalms 127 arises out of the psalms, psalmist exhorting the vir virtue of God's blessing and the blessing of children and his gifts. Take note here in verse 3 through 5, and I'm reading out of King James Version. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Life like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but speak with their enemies in the gate. The psalmist here makes his kids makes kids sound like wonderful little creatures to have, but children don't always seem to be blessing to many people because they make mistakes they cause you grief and sorrow so we tend to think that only God, good children can be a blessing blessing but no verse 3 5 contain contain no conditional statements so i am not blessed i am not blessed if i have good children no i have children therefore i am blessed children are not a blessing if they are good children good children are a blessing, period. And why? Because if the Lord says my ch children are a blessing when I see them as a blessing, no matter what they do, they deserve my attention. No. Verse 1, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain. Who built it? Unless the Lord guards, guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. The fact that God builds houses and guards walls in my sleep means I can be at rest. See you guys tonight. Amen. Amen. What, what chapter is it again? Psalm 127. Psalm 127. Okay. Yeah, I think that uh, this whole um, <clears throat> introduction speaks volume. <laughs> Um, but you know, we talked about last week, you know, when it, when it says the song of degrees, when it says the song of ascents and the, and the other translations, right? Like the new King James, it says the songs, the song of ascents, 
I mean, I have the I have the New King James. Um, the New King James says a, a song of ascents. Y luego dice of Solomon. Right, but my new, but my King James, he said the song of degrees to Solomon. So there's two ways you can teach this. Because I was going, okay, because which way do I go? I don't have Lalo here to debate to debate it. No, te crees. <laughs> I don't know where Lalo went. Homeboy peaced out. No, say okay. Se dormí, okay. <laughs> but anyway, there's two ways you can teach it, right? Uh, I found it the more I found it the more interesting way to teach it this way, the way that King James is teaching it. Uh, because my 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 uh, my old King my my King my King James, right? Uh, my King James, he said, the song of degrees of uh, to Solomon. So that changes the whole perspective of Solomon writing this. Solomon writing um, Psalm 127. <clears throat> because um, they say, I don't know, what, do you, what tradition do you have, Ernie? I, ha I have the NIV. A ver, que the NIV has, how does it, how does, what's the title of the NIV? It says, uh, Psalm 127 says, prosperity comes from the Lord. Okay, then, then, then what else does it oh, say? And the A, a song of incense and Solomon. Of Solomon? It's Solomon. a song of incense of yes. Solomon. Of Solomon, you see? Solomon. A sense, yeah, a song, Ascent. yeah. So a sense, um, a sense means that of that of a rising upward, right? Because these these uh, this this song of a sense, a sense means means you know, like I titled it right here, a song of a sense. Uh, it's a it's a uh, it's an it's a it's of elevation. Right? The act of rising upwards. So a sense means the act of rising upwards. And in the King James, they say a song of degrees. It's the same thing, right? <clears throat> the song of degrees, a song of degree, a degree of elevation. So you have the degree of elevation and you have the act of rising upwards. Why? Because they're going to Jerusalem. And while they're going to Jerusalem, they're singing these songs. Um, but um, so there you have it. The NIV says, the NIV says of Solomon, but the King James he said to Solomon. So the so if I'm gonna teach on the King James side, then my belief is that David wrote this psalm for his for his son Solomon. Um and it's referring to the temple, <clears throat> right? Mm -hmm. Because, uh, como dice? go ahead and, and take the read on it, Adolfo. Yes, he says, uh, verse one, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman keeps awake in vain. It is vain for you to raise up early, to retire late, to eat the bread of painful labors or sorrows, for he gives to his beloved even in his sleep. Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like an arrow in the hands of the warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. Amen. Oh, oh gosh. It's Let's longer see. than that. It's what? No, no. He stopped right there. He's right. Yeah, he, um, como se dice este, you see how it says, unless the Lord builds the house, so here you have King David, right? Because I'm going towards the King James. <laughs> That's how I wrote my introduction. That's where I got my title. 
the imparting with the imparting soul of wisdom to his son Solomon. So if I'm going to look at the King James perspective, and I'm going to teach on that it's the King David, it's King David imparting that wisdom to his son on building the 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 yes, the como si se the tabernacle, right, right. Um, but um, a permanent foundation because what happened? What happened? Well, the first, the tabernacle started with Moses, you know, and then they kept journeying, they kept journeying and journeying and journeying, journeying through the wilderness, <laughs> right? So they had to keep setting up the tabernacle, you know, like our study. I mean, like our introduction, right? The tabernacle that Moses was told to set up while wandering in the, in the wilderness represented the dwelling place of God. You know, so this was the dwelling place of God. Every time the tabernacle would set up, they would have to set up. Okay, pues vamos otra vez, you know, pack it up and let's go and then set the tabernacle again. But Psalm 127 has to do with the permanent tabernacle. And which Solomon's the first one who built it. The first temple. And why? Because David had his David was living in his palace and the Lord was, was dwelling in the tabernacle in the tent, right? <clears throat> so yeah. David was to build the, the Lord, the house for the Lord. But what did the Lord say? He said, Charlie, you can't, man. You know? Uh, but let's go to that. Let's go to uh let's go to First Chronicles 21. I mean, First Chronicles chapter 22. And let's look at, let's look at First uh, uh, Chronicles 22. Well, actually, let's do that. Well, let's, I'll tell you what, let's read it. Let's read, let's read uh, First Chronicles Chapter 22. So the key verses of First Chronicles chapter 22 is going to be um, 6 and 7. So sec First Chronicles chapter 22 verses 6 and 7 and 8. Those are going to be the key verses. Amen. Those are going to be the key verses um, for my title. Of Psalm 127, the imparting soul of wisdom to his son Solomon. So here, here's the imparting soul of wisdom to his son Solomon in First Chronicles 20, chapter 22, 20, verses seven through eight, seven through I mean six through eight. What, what chapter? Pastor? What, what, what chapter? <clears throat> chapter six, bro. Okay. No, no. First Chronicles chapter, chapter twenty two. First Chronicles twenty two six. No, First Chronicles, yeah, First Chronicles twenty two six through through um eight. <clears throat> through eight or through nine. I guess it's good. Okay. I mean, that's so you can understand what my title is. I mean, why I titled Psalm one hundred and twenty seven. <laughs> All right. Listo, Ernie. Oh, what happened to Robert? Se fue. Oh, okay. You didn't talk to him. No lo saludamos. <laughs> Welcome, Robert. Ernie, you there? You ready? Yes, sir. Yes. First Chronicles, First Chronicles, chapter twenty-two, verse six. No, no, no. Let's let's take the chapter. What? One. Oh, one, one to... oh, the whole chapter. Okay. How how many verses? Uh, take uh, uh, take take four. Four. Okay, Chronicles, First Chronicles, chapter. I mean, uh, you're yeah. right. First Chronicles. Yeah, chapter twenty-two. Yes, David prepares for temple building. Then David said, "This is the house of the Lord God, and this is the altar of burnt offering for Israel." So David gave orders to gather the strangers who were in the land of Israel and set stone cutters to cut out stones to build the house of God. And David prepared large quantities of iron to make the nails for the doors of the gates and for the clamps and more 
bronze than more bronze than could be weight. Four and timbers of said are beyond numbers for the Sidonians and tyrants brought large quantities of cedar timber to David. Five. Yeah, that's that's cedar. Cedar. Yeah. You got Sidonians, right? <laughs> Hi, Robert. Welcome. There he is. Can you, can you hear me? Hello. Loud and clear. I'm, I'm, clear. I'm, I'm, cl I'm jealous of that mustache you got. <laughs> <laughs> Eso no es mustache, es brocha. Oh. <laughs> and, then he's, and then he's still, because he's young, huh? Because he's got black hair still. <laughs> hey, uh, that's Ernie, what they, that's what they used to call it back then, no? Pastor, <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the scripture Ernie was reading, none of what he said, I couldn't hear Follow him because everything he said, I don't see it here. Maybe because I'm in two games. No, it's first, first Chronicles. Chronicles 22. First Chronicles chapter 22. You there? Yeah. First Chronicles chapter 22. Okay. What does yours? What does yours say for the first one? Then David said, "This is the house of the Lord, and this that's is it. the altar of the burnt that, offering." Yeah. That's his, what I read. His words his, are. Different. Then David said, this is the house of the Lord, and this is the altar of burnt offerings for Israel. Right. And the next one? So David gave orders to gather the strangers who were in the oh, land of Israel. That's right. Here's a different version. Huh? Here's yeah. A different version. Yeah. Here's NIV. Yeah, mine's King James. That's why. Never mind. Yeah, King James says aliens. But it's okay, and David commanded, no commanding. <laughs> Learning David, these. David commanded. <laughs> oh, David yeah. commanded. So they're preparing it, right? So let's go with uh five. Go ahead, Big Randy. David right. said. Okay. Second, First Chronicles chapter 22, verse 5, David said, My son Solomon is young and experienced, and the house that is to be built for the Lord shall be exceedingly magnificent, famous, and glorious throughout all the land. Therefore, now I will make preparation for it. So David made ample preparation before his death. Then he called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I had intended to build a house to the name of the Lord my God. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, you have shed much blood and have waged great wars. You shall not build a house to my name because you have shed so much blood on the earth before me. Verse 9. Verse 9. Uh, go ahead, Gus. Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all the enemies around around about for his name shall be called be Solomon and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days he shall build a house for my name and he shall be my son and I will be his father and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever now my son the Lord be with thee and prosper thou and build the house of the Lord thy God as he has said of thee, only the Lord, only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding, holy things and work of the service of the house of God, both of the bread and for the fine flour and meat and every offering, and for the unleavened uh, cakes and for that which is baked in the pan, and for that which is fire fried, 
and all manner of measure and size. 30. And to stand and to stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord, and likewise at evening, and to offer all burnt sacrifices unto the Lord in the Sabbath and the new moon, and on the in the set feast by number according to the order commanded unto them continually before the Lord. 32. And that they should keep the charge of the tabernacle of the congregation oh, and the charge of the Holy Spirit and the charge of the sons of Aaron, their brethren, in the service of the Lord. What happened, Randy? Where are you? Yeah, verse verse 24. I mean, chapter 24. <laughs> I mean, 23. 22. <laughs> oh, I, I, you know what? I'm sorry, guys. My, I, 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 I went one page, page, I went one page over. <laughs> my, 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 my name is Gus. No, I, I, I went 23 to jump towards you. Okay, 22, yeah. 22 verse what? First Chronicles. So starting, so starting at verse nine, go ahead. Verse nine. Nine to twelve. Okay. Okay, ready. Behold, a son shall be born into the and he shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all enemies around by him, for his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness into unto Israel in his name in his days. Can he shall build in the house for the by name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Eleven. Now, my son, the Lord be with thee, and prosper thou, and build the house of the Lord thy God, as he has said of thee. Only the Lord give thee wisdom and understanding, and give the charge concerning Israel that thou mayst. Keep the law of the Lord thy God. 13. Oh. <clears throat> Let me keep yeah. going. No, no, give it to. Um... Give it to Robert. Are you there, Robert? I'm, I'm kind of lost. Are you on one Chronicles or two Chronicles? One. Because I'm on one. Well, which, which verse are you on? Chapter 13. 13. Verse 13. 13. First Chronicles. Chapter 23, 13. No, 22. no 22. chapter 22. 22, I'm sorry. 22 is 13. You're on, you're on 1 Chronicles, uh, chapter 22? Yes, 13. Verse 13. Oh, verse 13, I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. It's okay, I'll, man. I know that mustache get in your way right now. <laughs> I'll go ahead and read it. I'm on First Chronicles, and um, it's coming from correct. On 13, it says... Now, therefore, our God, we thank thee and praise thee, glorious name. Is that correct? No. no. What 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 international Bible do you have? Um, I have the um, I don't know what Bible it is um. You're in the wrong chapter. Sounds like he's got the Book of Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, yeah, it is it's, actually. It's First Chronicles chapter twenty-two. Verse thirteen. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. I got it. Let's see. Well, I, I never, never mind. I got it now. All right, Robert. You're right. First Chronicles twenty-two, verse thirteen. There we go. Now I got it. There it is. Then shalt thou prosper if thou takest heed to fulfill the status, statutes, and judgments which the Lord charged Moses with concerning Israel. Be strong and be good. Be strong and of good courage, dread not, nor be dismayed. 14. Now, behold, in my trouble I have prepared for the house of the Lord and a hundred thousand talents of gold and a thousand thousand talents of silver and of brass, iron without weight, for it is in abundance. Tim timber also and stone have I prepared, and thou mayest add thereto it. 15. Moreover, there, there are workmen with thee in abundance, hewers and workers of stone and timber and all manner of cunning men for every manner of work. 
16. Of the gold, the silver, and the brass, and the iron, there is no number. Arise, therefore, and be doing, the Lord be with thee. 17. David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying, 18. Is not the Lord your God with you? And have he not given you rest on every side? For he hath given the inhabitants of the land into mine hand, and the hand is sub subdued before the Lord and before his people. 19. Now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Arise, therefore, and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels to God into the house that is the, to be built to the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. To me, to me, Pastor, uh -huh. what he did, what he did and, and said to David, because David was the one that, you know, killed Goliath. He started doing what he did and killed many people because he was in a war. He was a war man. And because he did that, although God called him from the beginning when he because he loved God since he was a boy. And and then he tells him. You can't do it because you you're you're a bad man. You're 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 a killer, basically. And it says your son, who has never done any of that, he's gonna be the one that's gonna do this. Because his hands are clean. That's amazing. To me. Because David David was a man after God's heart. But I guess, you know, God's God. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, that's why I said the key verses is, is six through seven. Uh, but you understand the calling, the, the calling. See, David understood, David, David understood the calling that God had for his son, David. I mean, for his son, Solomon. <laughs> right, right. That's why, that's why I titled it the imparting soul of wisdom to, to his son, Solomon. Because David is imparting that wisdom to his son Solomon. And he understood the calling that, that his son had. Right. Because, you know, like como dijo el Gus, hey, you got you, your your hands are blood are, are bloody. You cannot build this temple for me. Um and um but I like that. I like verse nine. Because <laughs> verse nine reminds me of Isaiah. Isaiah um Six nine, you know, we read that in Christmas time, right? Unto us a child is born, <laughs> you know. But uh, but uh, verse nine, you know, I don't know who I can look call verse nine. Me, huh? I think. Yeah. You know, verse yeah, nine. Lord, he shall be born to thee, and shall be a man of rest, which is Solomon. Right, and you, you shall call his name what? Okay, uh, and I will give him rest from the enemies. Run about for his name shall be Solomon. Now I'll give him peace, quietness unto Israel in his days. He even named him. <laughs> right? Why did, yeah, he why named him um, Solomon. Uh, David didn't name him. God named him. Oh, so God, God didn't let David build the temple at all and didn't let him work on it or anything? And, and, and he even, didn't even let him name him. God named him. That's what that says. That's all. Everything that, that, that David, David, did. Didn't, David didn't give him the name. God did. <laughs> so everything David did, he did a lot of positive stuff. But oh, yeah. because he did a lot of negative stuff, he wasn't able to do that. Do you think God still does that to us now? Um, well, we're not at war right now. I know... Some have been in the army. Some have been in the navy. That's life now. We're not. We're not written in the Bible. I believe if we're Christians, you can still go to war. I think because this is part of our life. You know, those that were that did go, like my grandfather. <clears throat> my got my, my grandfather served the Lord. But he he was there. And his brothers, you know. And uh, 
So, and he was a Christian who played the played the, the big guitar in the church, the bass. And my uncle, the only uncle that we never saw again was my uncle Pete. Because he they said he, he blew his legs off. And he Whoa. didn't want nobody to see him that way. So you know I it, it God's God, he's gonna do what he's gonna do. And he didn't want somebody that had a bunch of blood in his hands. Because David was a killer. He was a war man of war. Being as small as he was, he was a man of war. Yeah, that's Psalm, Psalm 144. When we get there, we'll see it. Because <laughs> Psalm 144 is, is the Psalm of David. But look at the first verse. Okay, they say Psalm 144, verse 1. Psalm 44. One forty-four, you said, Pastor. Uh, correct. Someone... Blessed be, blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. My loving kindness and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer. If He trains us for war to shed blood. I wonder why he didn't let him build the temple, though. He didn't want no one building the temple that shed blood. Yeah, he, he wanted purity. Um, purity. God is about purity, but at the same time, he needed to save his people. And and David was a man of battle. Shed many, took out many people. Not just him alone, but uh, with his army. Right. But his son was clean. Didn't have to fight because his daddy did everything for for God. It was all for God. It wasn't. It was not a thing of of him uh, personal. It wasn't personal with him. It, it was where he was and where he became. And you know, because he was the the Bible says he was a man of God uh, 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 unto God's heart. You know, and so. He followed what God said, and even to the point where God names his son Solomon and it allows God to train him in his ways, how he wanted him to go. That's what I believe. If I'm not if I'm correct, Pastor. Yeah, you're you're absolutely correct. <laughs> Let's look at Second Samuel chapter seven. Welcome back, Robert. Second time you said? That's correct. Hold on, let me go to the huh. Second Samuel okay, 7, what verse? Let me, get, chapter. let me get you the, let's see, 426. 4 and, 4 and 12. 4 to 12? Uh, the key verse is, is, is the verse 4 and 12. Hold on a minute, I'm there, I'm getting you. Second Samuel chapter seven verse four, right? First Samuel okay? First Samuel okay? Seven. First Samuel seven. Yeah. Chapter seven. Chapter seven. Okay. And what verse? The, well, the key verse four. Seven, seven and I mean four and seven is the four and twelve is the key verse. All right, amen. Chapter chapter seven, right? Verse 4, just read 4 and, and, and uh, 12. Well, that's or, the key 4 chapter. through 12. That's the well, key I'm going to read uh, chapter 7, uh, 1 Samuel. No, 2 Samuel. 2 no, no. Samuel, Samuel, chapter 7. 2 oh. Samuel. Uh, I got to go to 2 Samuel. Hold on. Chapter 7. Verse K, 4 through 12. Well, the key verse is four, four and twelve. Oh, just read tw four and twelve. But we're gonna read all the way to. Um... I finally got it. You want to read the whole chapter, uh, Pastor? No, I say we just read to number twenty-two. Four to twenty-two. Yeah, we're gonna read uh Second Samuel chapter seven, verses one through twenty-two. 1 through 22, okay. Or verses 1 through 22, okay. 
Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Robert, right? Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with, with one, right? Correct. Right. Okay. Uh, one, uh, chapter seven, uh, verse one. And it came to pass when the king sat in the house. And Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. Two, that the king said unto Nathan, the prophet, see now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. Three, and Nathan said to the king, go do all that is thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. Four, and it came to pass that night the word of the Lord came Unto Nathan saying, verse 5, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me an house for me to dwell in? 6. Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt, even to this day, but have walked in the tent and in a, temp in a tabernacle. 7. In all the places wherein I have walked, with all the children of Israel, spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me a house of cedar? Uh, verse 8. Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheep coat, from the following sheep to the ruler over my people, over Israel. Nine. And I was with thee. Whither. Whithersoever thou. Wentest and have cut off. All thy enemies out of thy sight. And have made thee. A great name. Like unto the name of the great men. That are on the earth. Verse ten. Moreover I will appoint in a place. For my people Israel. And will plant them. That they may dwell in a place of their own. And move no more, neither shall the children of wickedness afflict with, with afflict them any more as before time. Verse 11. Hey, give, give verse 11, Tony. Oops. Or follow Ernie. Ah. Ernie. Verse 11, Ernie. Yay. Okay. Verse 11. <laughs> it says, Even from the day that I appointed judges over my people, Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also declares to you that the Lord will make a house for you. When your days are finished and you lie down with your fathers, I will raise up your descendants after you who will come from you and I will establish his kingdom. He said, he shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his king, done forever. 14. Kingdom. I will be a father to him, and he will be a son to me. When he commits iniquity, I will correct him with the rod of men and the strokes of the son of men. But my loving kindness shall not depart from him. As I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you, your house and your kingdom shall endure before me forever. Your throne shall be established forever. In accordance with, the, with all these words and all this vision, so Nathan spoke to David. Then David the king went and sat before the Lord, and he said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is my house that you have brought me this far? And yet this was ins insignificant in your eyes, O Lord God, for you have spoken also of the house of your servant concerning the distant future. And this is custom of man, O Lord God. Again, what more can David say to you? For you know your servant, O Lord God. For the sake of your word and according to your own heart, you have done all this greatness to let your servant know. 
For this reason you are great, O Lord God, for there is none like you, and there is no God besides you. According to all that we have heard with our ears, there is, there is no rock like our God, no doubt. Where should we read that at? I just added that little deal. <laughs> yeah, that to the Bible, baby. I just seasoned it with salt, <laughs> man. That's all. <laughs> well, 22, right? Yeah, that was 22. 20, 22. Yeah, therefore you are great, O Lord God, for there is none like you. Nor is there any God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. <clears throat> yeah, that verse right there. Speak volume. Speak volume. But notice, notice verse 7, you know, because the Lord says, you know, the Lord is saying, I never asked any of you guys <laughs> to build me a house. Why? Because God doesn't really need it to be put in, in, in a temple, in a building, right? Verse 7, right? Mm -hmm. Well, verse 7, other one? Yes, it says, whatever I have done with all the sons of Israel... Did I speak a word with one of the tribes of Israel, which I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you built me a house of cedar? Right? No, notice the Lord the Lord says, Yeah, I never really asked, I never asked any of you guys to build me a house. It says, Why have you not built me a house of it, of cedar? That's what mine yeah. says. Yeah. Yes. He says not oh, yeah, yeah, why have you not? Yeah, you're right. He, but he, look he, at the beginning. It says when it says what what well my new King James, right? Verse seven it says, Wherever I have moved about with the children of Israel, have I ever spoken a word to anyone from the tribes of Israel? The Lord saying, Have I ever did I speak to anybody about this? <clears throat> you know the Lord is is, is saying it's what we do you know right well his next it's words what, are it's what we do his, his next his next word is why build ye me why build you not me a house of cedar it's going how come you didn't build me one? that's what he's saying in verse 7 He had other thoughts when he wanted to build a temple, though. What, what's the word, Pastor? No, I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to find that same statement here in Second First Chronicles twenty two, because it's right here. Uh, wait a minute. Let me see. Twelve. First Chronicles twenty two twelve. Only may the Lord give you wisdom and understanding, give you charge according to. Uh, Okay, it's not here in Second Chronicles. I thought it was in Second Chronicles twenty-two. Uh, First Chronicles twenty-two. Yeah. Okay. So no, it's not in here. It's it's only in uh, Second Samuel. It's only in Second Samuel that the Lord says. Did I ever talk to any of you guys about this? <laughs> I did that, say in, in 11, it does say the Lord also declares to you that the Lord will make a house for you. 11? Of second, second seven, first 11? Yeah. And as, and as since it's the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, and I have called thee to rest from all thy enemies. And the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house. That's 11. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Right. But the, but the, uh, como se dice, the exhortation is that God didn't ask anybody. No, I didn't. 
But he wanted one now, right? Well, because he, for the people to come and worship. Right. Or like your church now. Yeah, but come to gather, gather together and worship God. Right. Because. And, and it's funny, he said cedar. He didn't say uh, uh, birch or, <laughs> or, you know. So but then a, cedar, cedar smells good, though, you know. Yes, cedar does smell to it. And termites don't eat it either. Right. They don't like it. Nor, um, he didn't say walnut. He said cedar. It would last longer. Right. Cedar, it cedar lasts you longer. <laughs> huh? You build a patio of cedar, no, no le pasa nada. Uh -uh. Nothing. Nothing can eat it. Nothing bites into it. No, no termites. Nothing. But other wood, yeah. Plus, the cedar, the cedar also has a certain look to it, though, you know? Yeah, that reddish white. Yeah. Yeah. And it smells good. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so here's there's where we have the the, um, the imparting soul of wisdom to his son Solomon. There's where I got my title. But let's talk about it. Let's go to Psalm 127. And let's um Let us meditate on that. Psalms 27 or 127? Psalm 127. You want to read it, Pastor? Um, yeah, you know, because I'm, what I'm referring to is, um, well, we have Hermano Richard read it. He's coming in right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, there's Richard. What's up, my brothers? Can you guys hear me? Okay, we yeah, hear you. Clear, clear, clear. Clear. No, I, I just got clear. out of the shower, so I'm, uh, uh -oh. I'm in the room. We don't want, we don't want like to see that. you. <laughs> we don't want to see you. <laughs> we can't see Robert either. I know. I'm not saying that. He's in the dark, Damien. <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm at, right here, where I am. Huh? The light shining at my bedroom window. Uh, it overlooks uh, Associated Road in. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you're over in the boulevard at a mobile gas station. But I just got out of the shower. I'm going to walk over here. Praise the Lord. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Or shorts, at least. Yes, sir. It's on tour. Your mom wants you. Yeah. I mean, I tried earlier, and I seen how you guys sometimes say the link's not working, and it wasn't working. So, but praise the Lord, got through. Good to see you, Robert. Richard, sorry. Like, no, no, Robert, talking, too. A lot of people call me Robert. No, no. I, R, R and R, you know. Robert, I hadn't seen him in a long time. Uh-huh. Is, is he on here, though? Yeah, him and his nice big old mustache. Right. <laughs> it's like there's well, there's the mustache. There's Robert. Hey, Robert. <laughs> oh, you Ruiz. can see him? I don't see no, him. No, I just I just see it says Robert James there. Uh, James M. There. M. Ruiz Sr. Yeah. Let's yeah. see that mustache, Robert. Come on. I'm I'm, I'm jealous, I told him. <laughs> <laughs> and there's Pastor Junior. Praise the Lord, hermano. Buenas noches, hermano. Buenas noches. So I'm one, in an adult, the sheet, look at there it is. <laughs> <laughs> and Adolfo, where's Adolfo? Faithful Adolfo. Mm -hmm. And I seen Randy on there too. Hey, here's Adolfo. Buenas noches, senor. Give me a loco. Hey, hey, man, Big Randy. I was what? listening to Big Randy's testimony, man. I'm sorry I interrupted you guys. Where were you guys at? <laughs> were, you, were you going to hear Randy's testimony? Yeah, I was listening to Randy's. Me and my wife were listening to Randy's testimony. I oh. heard Lalo's. Oh, yeah, I heard Lalo's. Yes. I didn't read, I didn't do Randy's. I didn't even know it was there. 
How old is your wife, Robert? And I heard uh, Brother Adolfo también. Very nice. Oh, how you guys did? All right. Yeah. yeah how, how old is your wife, Robert? And Robert? Can he hear you? <laughs> Can you hear us, Robert? Are you on yeah, mute? Me? Yeah. He said, how's your wife? So I don't know why, but he asked. <laughs> I don't have no wife. He's not married. Oh, hey, 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 Richard, how's your wife? Oh, my wife is good. Thank you very oh, much. Yeah, my wife. Yeah, I was just, I was just wondering. <clears throat> yeah, thank you though, brother. Amen. We all, we all uh, could use prayers for ourselves, for our wives, for our relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, the never-ending uh, battle. You know, uh, right now, uh, not good. And I'm thinking, you know, it's, it's all, it's always um, spiritual. You know, it really is. You're a believer, and you, and you are awakened, and you. You you realize really how much the spirit world exists. How could you not be a believer and not believe in the spirit world? You know, in, in the supernatural, right? The world, right. Uh, the world is all about fantasy and magic and well, hey, that's spirits, man. You know, you go alcohol. That's food, wine, and good spirits, but those aren't good spirits. But I always I tell my kids. It's 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 a spiritual warfare. You're going through this because it's it's all a spiritual warfare. And the more you press in towards the light, towards the Lord, towards God, towards the things of God and the things from above, you are going to be, um, you know, uh, hit with some attacks. And some people say, I, I you're blaming it on the devil. We, I, I know that some things are not the devil. A red light, you know, when you're in a hurry, it's not always the devil or a flat tire or unexpected. It's not always the devil. You know, but a lot of it is a lot of it is when you're a believer and you're coming under attacks like, you know, I don't know if anybody's gone through a Job experience, but sometimes we feel like it. But Job went through something that I never hoped to go through, you know, but it could happen. It could happen. And if we're not equipped for every good work and not just for every good work, for every attack. Right. Yeah. For every attack we go through. But uh, we pray for ourselves. We pray for our wives, our children, our grandchildren, our great grandchildren. Amen. And and Robert uh, Adolfo called me Robert, but maybe your wife is Richard. right. Around. Amen. You know, you don't know what the Lord has intended for us. You know, he, but He has things good, not evil. Right. Hey, Ernie, are you listening, Ernie? <laughs> a wife, wife is a good thing, you know. And some might <laughs> some <laughs> be, <laughs> but you know what. You, you have to look in the mirror and if you think your wife's a bad thing maybe you should look in the mirror and examine yourselves and ask the lord examine my heart lord because it takes two to tango it's a two-way street it's a it's a partnership you know and both have to be on the same page we all know you guys know but i'm just i'm just preaching to somebody amen maybe myself yeah he was talking about the spiritual world what is the, spiritual? There, he, there he is with this background i love it and, and what is the spiritual the spiritual. What do you mean? What is the spiritual? Yeah. What is spiritual? Like, the things of God. Amen. There you go. The things of That's God. Spiritual. And there's, there's an enemy your, too. Your Bible. Is. Your Bible is spiritual. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's physical because I'm seeing it. No. 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 But but it's God oh, breathed. It's a. It's that that word is exists only because it came from God who is. The Ho Holy Spirit, who is the part of the Trinity, who is Jesus, who is Abba, Father, Jehovah, you know, Jehovah Nisi, all powerful, omnipresent. It's not just, uh, you know, uh, uh, I say uh, spiritual, it's physical because Jesus came down as flesh. Come on, somebody. He came down as a man in the flesh, flesh and bone, blood Amen. coming out, that yeah. blood that we call, call the blood of Jesus, that's physical, not Amen. just spiritual, but it has spiritual power to overcome wickedness in high and dark Amen. places. Come on, the Lord. Come on, somebody. So, Ernie, those is are the it, spiritual is it a, things. Is it a place yeah. where there's a lot of spirits? Oh, there's no. there's demons. demons. There's demons and there's, there's angels, you know. Yeah. Uh, Richard, uh, best, uh, best, sir. Richard. Yes, uh, sir. The part of... Oh, shoot, I forgot what you were saying. The spirit. 
Yeah, I know about that. There's Go. one thing. There's one thing that you gotta understand, brother Ernie, is that when we were born, there were angels right there watching us, and there were also demons watching us from the very beginning. Ooh, come on, brother. Come on, now. Come on. They still here. The ones that were assigned to you, they will follow you everywhere. And if they need help, they will call others to do whatever they want to do to you if you let them. One thing that we as Christians need to do is to know who we're fighting against with. But if we're going to use the spiritual weapons, then we're going to be in victory. Come on. But if we keep using natural weapons, we're going to be defeated over and over and over and over. And we're going to be looking all over the place for answers when we have the answer right here in front of our eyes. If we just let the Holy Spirit lead us, lead our lives. If we just connect ourselves with the Holy Spirit, from the very moment that we open our eyes early in the morning and give ourselves to the Lord in prayer and give ourselves to him and tell him, here I am, use me, I'm available for you. He will guide you. He will show you great and mighty things that you do not know. In a little bird, in a little flower, and everywhere you go, everywhere you go, he will show himself to you. But it's to, the, to say, yeah, I'm a Christian and I believe in the spiritual world. I mean, we surrounded, just right here, right now, we surrounded by spirits, evil spirits and spirits from the Lord. There are The Holy Spirit is within us. See, that's one of the beautiful things that David and Solomon, Solomon built the house for the Lord. But that house, no. we are the house now. We are the temple. The Holy Spirit dwells within us. And when the Holy Spirit dwells, there is there cannot be no darkness in there. And if there's doubts, and if there is darkness, if there is things, that means that something is wrong. We need to get in touch with the Holy Spirit and help and ask him to guide us and to make ourselves known to him. You know, it's, it's something that is to explain the spiritual world. You have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit in order to understand. In order to understand, I mean, we are humans, we're human beings. We have a brain and we have a memory bank and we have everything that functions in the natural. But the spiritual world is something that is everywhere. Everywhere, anything, anything. The enemy can use every little, the, the enemy is looking for little tiny spaces to get in, into your brain, into your mind. Yeah, it's just looking and looking every moment of the day. Whenever you, the moment you get up to the moment you go and lay down, they're looking for little places to get in. And if you let them, they will get in and then thoughts will come. Then thoughts and more thoughts and doubts and so many other things that can confuse and bring confusion. See, and God Satan, is not a God of confusion. See, Satan only attacks those that threaten him. So I can tell you that. So, so the He's spiritual there, world. If you're, if you're just a, you're not doing nothing. You're not in the Lord. He ain't gonna attack you. He's already got you. Right? Come on. You know? That's and, right. That's the truth. And I, see, I know that Satan's been after me for years and years. And yesterday, yesterday, God showed me something that he has me still. Because I had to, I was telling Pastor Robert, I had to, uh, my granddaughter was really super sick with a hundred and 203 fever wow. and i went and they called me to go over there they're right here in my same house 
went over there with my wife and we I laid hands on her and prayed over her and that instant when God healed her. It was Hallelujah. gone. Glory. So God's letting me know I he, he, when when I failed him as I did and I'm going to give my testimony later on but when I failed him he didn't call me Gus. You know who called me Gus? Satan. Mm. Female demon called me. Gus. Wow. And I looked up and I saw her. She was an ugly looking thing. And and then she saw me. Her eyes went wide open. And she, she went down. Whoa. I think I shared it with Pastor. I'm not sure. And when God called me, he said, physician, heal thyself. Because he gave me the gift of healing. He didn't call me Gus. He said, physician, heal thyself. And when I healed my, when the Lord, when I prayed over my granddaughter, I told my daughter and to my wife and my family there, I said, God is still with me. Amen. Because he healed her that instant. And it was to prove to me that I'm still his. Praise God. Come on, God. When you feel God, you, especially me, you feel bad because you let him down. Hmm. But for him to call me physician, not Gus, and got, the Bible says Satan knows your name. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. But God calls you by your gift. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's beautiful. Thank God for that. That's beautiful. Go ahead, Hello. Judy. Wow. It's a good morning. Amen. <laughs> no, I was because you guys talked about Job right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I showed I showed Gus one of my t-shirts that I'm gonna make. <laughs> oh yeah. But 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 it says it says that uh it said Satan thought that he had Job. By stripping everything, by stripping him, but everything that he had, yeah. but the thing he loved the most was was God. <laughs> right, he loved the most was God. Yeah, Amen. he thought he took homeboy out of, because he stripped him everything. <laughs> but yeah. it was God he loved the most. Amen. And that reminded me of of, of Psalm seventy three, Psalm seventy three, verse twenty five. Que dice? It says, "Whom have I in heaven but you?" And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides you. Amen. Powerful statement right none there. Upon the earth. That's that right there is a powerful statement. Psalm mm. 73, verse 25 says, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon the earth that I desire besides you. You know, that that's part of a man that is devoted to God. Amen. I mean, 73 is, is a psalm of Asaph. You know, Asaph, Kenneth for Asaph. Asaph was, was David's music man, but he's also a minister. He was also a, 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 a prophet. You know, some people talk. I remember I was serving at this church, right? <laughs> and the guys came to me, he goes, hey, Junior, because they were questioning, can you have more than one gift? And I, they asked me, like, hey, because, well, they wanted to hear... They only wanted to hear what they wanted to hear, right? But I told them, yeah, you have more than one gift. And they go, oh, nah, that's not true. And they walked away. Uh, but look, Asaph, that's your choice. Asaph, Asaph was a music man. He was a worship leader. He led the worship. And he was also a minister. And he was a prophet. Wow. También, can you have more than one? Well, I mean, Asaph says it, tells, say, it tells you, Asaph alone can answer that question. You mm -hmm. could have a gift. Pero mira como dice, right? Psalm 73, 25. Psalm 73, 25? Hold on, let me yeah. I mean, that right, that verse right there is one to memorize. <laughs> because how many of us can say the same thing? I mean, we all lost a loved one. You know? Um, we all lost uh, someone that we loved dearly. I mean, today's my oldest brother's, my oldest sister's... You guys, uh, Your older sister, what, Pastor? Hey, my oldest sister passed away uh, uh, two years ago. Sally, 
Yeah, Sally. It's so today was years, Pastor. Huh? It's been three years. Oh, three years. Three years or two? Uh, uh, two. No sé, son tres or, or two. I, I don't remember. <laughs> Man, it doesn't seem that long ago, Pastor. It really doesn't. But you know, I I, I asked the Lord I said, for her. in the morning, and I said, Lord, can you just uh, tell my sister happy birthday for me? <laughs> oh, dale, that's nice. Because he's the mediator between man and God. Mm. You know, Jesus for anything. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong if you go to God. And, you know, we're not to pray to the dead, speak to the dead, but we can go to Jesus to be that mediator. Amen. Because uh, it hurts, man. You know, you lose somebody that you love. But look at, look at, look at Esau right here. It says, whom have I in heaven but you? I mean, could you imagine losing a wife? Losing a husband, losing a son, a daughter. But here Asaph says, Who have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. You know, What's that's it? why I'm, this is Asaph, but this is, could be said of Job también, because Job Job said in Job 13, 15, he said, Though you slay me, yet will I trust you. And what is trust? Believe. You know? If we say it out. tomorrow morning, you got to read it all the way. got to read it all the way to twenty-eight. Can you read? Can you read that ASAP? What does Psalm uh, ASAP say about who do I have? Psalm uh, Psalm seventy-three, verse twenty-five. Okay, but check it out. It says, "Whom have I in heaven but you? And beside you, I desire nothing on earth. My flesh and my heart may fail." But God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. For behold, those who are in, those who are far from you will, will perish. You have destroyed all those who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, the nearness of God is my good. I have made, I have made the Lord God my refuge. That I may tell of all your works. Mine, that, my, mine, speaks, says, speaks by him. mine says whoring from thee. Yeah, whoring because you prostituted yourself to another God, another idol. What is it? Your, your own lust. Wow. But that's a that's a commitment. That's a, that's a, como se dice este, a, um, a resolution. Ah. He made a resolution. What's his resolution? Verse 28, como dijo el Big Randy. My resolution, right? Is, that I may clear all your works. No, but it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all thy works. Amen. 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 That's what look equal. He's saying, I have put my trust in the Lord God. Uh -huh. That's a declaration. Mm -hmm. I declare and decree. Trust mm -hmm. means to believe. Right. You know? If I'm trusting you're going to pick me up, I'm, I'm believing you're going to pick me up. <laughs> Amen. You know, you know Pastor, uh, Proverbs uh, chapter 3, the verse 5 and 6, where it says, trust the Lord with all your heart. Right? All, you all your heart. And then also, where is it? It's also the scripture. I don't know the, where it says it, but it says to love the Lord with all your heart. With yeah. all your heart. If you, you're trusting the Lord with all your heart, you're trusting the Lord with, and you're and you're loving the Lord with all your heart. How much room do you have left to love anything else, or to trust anything else? If you're loving the Lord with all your heart, and you're loving the and you're trusting the Lord with all your heart, what more room do you have left to trust in anything else other than the Lord? Trust in riches, trust in man, trust in yourself, trust in your wife, your spouse, trust in you know your friends. Trust in, 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 in what? The world? I, I can tell you. More room to trust in anything else other than the Lord. 
you trust trust the Lord with all your heart. I, I can say I can say if you're a threat to Satan's kingdom, he's gonna attack you. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was talking to a friend today. He called me out of the blue at my work. They came and got me. They go, there's somebody that's asking for you. It's one of my old homeboys. I haven't seen him for a, over a year. And we he was upset with me. And I was like, man, I can't I, I can't make time to go see you. And he was on the phone. And he was just saying all kinds of things. He goes, man, I'm just cut, getting hit left and right. And I said, you know why? Because you've given your life to the Lord. You know, you, he, he goes, my family's coming against me. And, 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 and I just, you know, I'm trying. I'm reading my word. And I go, just count it as all joy. So you go through yep. various trials. All right, all joy. You, the Lord, the, the Lord has you. Don't worry. Don't don't trip. Because that's why it's happening because the enemy had you and now he doesn't. It's like that dude, that crazy boyfriend that loses that girl, that good girl, and he go all crazy, uh, trying to get her back, you know, attacking her left and right, coming at her sideways. That's the enemy. You know, because when like you said earlier, Gus, brother Gus, you said when he had us, he ain't tripping. You know, he, he, ain't, he ain't gonna, you know, come at you anyways. The one that's coming after you is the one that left the 99 for the one. That's the Lord, the good shepherd, trying to bring you back, trying to, you know, save your soul. But it's already been done. We just haven't received it because we're, we're rebellious. But not until we walk into the marvelous light, till we finally get broken, humble ourselves and cry out and says, you know, call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved, right? And I just told him, man, yeah, you're 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 a target right now, brother, for the enemy. Amen. Because if you if you can come to come to the Lord wholeheartedly, your family is tripping on you because they're used to that other one that that's just you know always in trouble and always you know, and they don't think it's real. Let let them not think you know it's real. Your your relationship is with the with you and the Lord, not your families, you know. But your family is going to come at you, the ones you love the most. Because all of those reasons, brothers, I will encourage you to be faithful to this ministry. I will encourage you to be here week after week after week so that we can be a witness for so many people out there. Because mm -hmm. it's, not just, it's not just us that get together here that we see each other. You know, but there's a lot of people out there they are in need to hear the gospel. Right now, we need a revival. This country. Right now, we need a revival. Things are happening. And it's, it's no time anymore to be wasting so much time. It's time to go out there and preach the gospel. Go and preach the gospel to anybody that the Holy Spirit will send it to us. You know, I, I thank God and I encourage you. For you guys, I've been praying for all of you guys uh, right now, and I just thank you. I just thank the Lord that you guys are here, and I hope and pray that it will continue. It will continue because this is what the church of God is. This is the church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is the church that needs to be out there. Right, fighting the good fight. Right, by when the enemy is at, we need to take control of souls that are going down to hell and bring them back, turn them around, get them out of hell by by the word of God. You know, we have the power, we have the voice, we have our time. You know. In my case, you know, I'm the oldest here with you guys, probably. And I see myself counting every minute for the rest of my days. And by the grace of God, I'm still alive. And I'm Amen. not going to waste any more time. I'm not, I'm not planning to waste any more time. This is not a game. It's not a joke. This is souls we're talking about. Souls are going to hell. This is something serious, something that needs to be preached and teach. This is just a, a, a way to, to, to do what the enemy does to us. He hates us all. He hates us. 
but he has nothing against us. Just like he had nothing against our Lord Jesus Christ, he has nothing against us because the Holy Spirit cleanses us every moment, every Amen. protect us every time. He will protect us. He will protect us every time. Do we just let the Holy Spirit deal with everything? Let the Holy Spirit deal with every moment. Let the Holy Spirit deal with every individual that comes into our lives. At this moment, I praise God to see you all. You know, and I'm going to be leaving in, in, a, in a couple of minutes. But I want to just say that I appreciate you guys, all of you. And I love you very much. And I'm very glad to see you all together. Uh, it, even Lalo, you know, that comes and, and goes just for a couple of minutes. You know, but he makes his 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 presence known, and we all love Lalo very much. And he might be a busy man, so is uh, 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 Elias. You know, a very busy man, but uh, we have to separate time for the Lord. We have to stop being too busy, and 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 get together. You know, I'm I'm not saying that. Because I have plenty of time, because I don't, I don't have much time. I love to get encouraged. I love to hear my brothers and absorb, you know, more, uh, more bullets that I can get to my arsenal so that I can use against the enemy when he comes tomorrow, tonight, you know, to visit them, you know. Because he's out there. He's whatever. Whatever we go, he's going to be there waiting the moment to strike. You know, but may the Lord bless us and keep us. And may his face will shine upon you. And may his face will uh, be with you and give you peace, prosperity, health, and strength, and everything that he has for all of you guys and you, you houses, you households. And I enjoy and I'm glad to hear the great miracle that the Lord show you, Brother Gus, with you, with your daughter, with his uh, daughter, uh, great granddaughter. I am so blessed to hear that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Amen. Amen. Amen, Adolfo. Adolfo. We receive that blessing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, hermano. Amen. I was just meditating on what you guys said right now. But this is, this is what Martin Luther said. <laughs> and then we'll go back to Psalm 127. Mark, Martin you. Luther in the Bible? Huh? Martin Luther in the Bible? No, no, no. I'm just saying. We'll go back to Psalm 127. <laughs> Martin, Martin Luther said this about, about the gospel. Because you guys are talking about the gospel. Oh. Says Martin, Martin Luther, oh, Adolfo said that. Martin Luther said this. If, the, if our gospel were received in peace it wouldn't be the true gospel <laughs> mm, yeah it's about if, if, our right? gospel, if our gospel were received were received in peace it wouldn't be the true gospel and why because jesus said if you truly want to be my disciple you will be creating a division in your own home right mm. that's, in, that's in mark no, that's in Luke chapter 12. Uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 51, 52, 53. Who's the one that says that speaks volume? <laughs> okay. Oh, you do, Pastor. <laughs> yeah, right. Speak volume. <laughs> it's going through my head. Speak volume. Speak volume. I go, Who's Luke, Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Luke chapter 12, verse 51 to 53. In reference to, if the gospel were received in peace, it wouldn't be the true gospel. Luke chapter 1? Chapter 12. 12. 51 and 52, 53. You suppose that I can't... I thought... Well... Because Jesus said, if you truly want to you will be creating division in... Okay, Pastor... 
Uh, 51 and 53. Oh, okay. Yeah, do you support oh. give peace on earth? <laughs> I Go tell ahead. you, Emmanuel, all, the red division. Read it, Emmanuel. That, yeah, that's where it says it. Because uh, I know that like what I was saying earlier, Pastor, telling the brother too, you know, the, fact, the ones closest to you are the ones who hurt you or distract you or, you know, or uh, try and discredit you and, and accuse you, you know, the enemy. And a lot of times they're not, they're not connected to God. Uh, there are, you know, we have a lot of family members that call themselves Christians, but yet do they believe? Do they really believe? Why are they always contradicting or questioning? You know, I guess because they're they're like the uh, sow of the seeds where some of the word goes or the seed goes down and it doesn't grab root. You know, uh, you know, it says diligently seek the kingdom of God first and all these things shall be added unto you. Some people aren't seeking. They they go for for uh, a routine. They go for, you know, good. People, they weren't saying that they were wanted their ears tickled. You weren't saying what they wanted to hear. The, some people just want their ears tickled. But that, that the true gospel is not going to bring peace because it's like a sharp, sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts through bone and marrow. It cuts through the heart. It makes you really examine yourself. That's why people sitting in church hear the word and they go, did you tell him, did you tell him about that? He's talking to me. He's talking about me. You know, hey, I don't want, I, I don't like that pastor because you know what? I don't like what he's saying. You know, it's cutting through them, cutting through us. You know, the truth, the truth sets us free, and the enemy wants us blind and still in bondage. You know, it's not always about a pep talk. It's something that we don't like to hear, like maybe the fire and brimstone of hell, repentance, you know, fearing the Lord. We like to hear the blessings, but we don't want to hear sometimes the truth. That, uh, how we're living, oh, God, the holy God. Come on, somebody. Oh, so <laughs> that is what is happening. Oh. You, you <laughs> tell your family, you know, hey, you know what? I rebuke that. Rebuke the, oh, now you're holy, holy. Where, where's that coming from? What? Well, I, I, my God's yeah, holy. Yeah. I heard I heard God. Told me. Tell, yeah. tell you something right. And I'm not saying I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, Jesus, but Jesus is in me. Oh, now you're Jesus. You know, oh man, it's just, you know, one thing after another. Hey, you know, I got called, I got called Santucci. Santucci. Oh, my own wife. <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago, though. A long time ago. <laughs> okay, Psalm Psalm one hundred and twenty-seven. Amen. I gotta mark that Luke twelve, brother. Yeah. Psalm 127. You know, the, the word protects us and it defends us, you know? Yes, from it does. <laughs> from the, the Brethren. Psalm 112. One, no, 121. 127. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Go ahead, Robert. Okay. Um, Verse 1, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman wake his butt in vain. Keep going? Yeah, keep going. 2, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. For, see, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. Verse 3, Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the whom is his reward. Verse 4, As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Verse 5, Happy is the man that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Um, you know, what, what we learn here is that the Lord's in control. And nobody builds their house without the Lord knowing, without the Lord, the, without the Lord allowing you to build that house. 
<clears throat> you know, and yeah, this is talking about the tabernacle, but then again, building your house, you know, and allowing the Lord to build your house, to discipline your children. But, you know, that's why it said it's, it's unless the Lord builds it, builds that house, they labor in vain who build it. Mm. Right? Because nothing happens uh, by chance. You right. Know, you, might, you know what? I work for it. That's why, that's why I got my house the way it is. Now, it has nothing to do with that. It's mm. the Lord that allowed you to do that. Come on, somebody. Because a lot of people think they want to get the credit. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's another T-shirt right there, Brother. <laughs> Amen. But no, it's not like that. Because look at look at uh, Matthew chapter ten, verse twenty nine through thirty. Matthew chapter ten, verse twenty nine to thirty. I mean, I'm cross referencing to that scripture because Psalm one twenty seven says, "Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor and build it." Where'd right? you say to go? Where'd you say uh, to go? Matthew. Yes, sir. Matthew. Matthew. Yeah, Matthew chapter. Twenty twenty nine and thirty. Matthew chapter ten, twenty nine thirty. Yes. Twenty nine and thirty of Matthew chapter ten. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Uh, verse 29. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from their father's will. Verse 30. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Ooh, you don't have much number on me. <laughs> <laughs> you said Matthew 20 what? No, chapter 10, Matthew 10, 29 and 30, right? Man. Correct. <laughs> I was at 10 already. But, you know, that's it right there, the key verse. But the, but the very hairs on your head are numbered. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right? That's I got, crazy. I got, but, maybe, I got maybe 50. <laughs> but look at the sparrows. Oh, yeah. And now one of them. When they the die. Group. Apart from your father's what? Apart from your father's will. Apart from your father's will. That means that tells us tells us that God is sovereignty and nothing happens by chance. Right? All by your father's will. Yeah, it says right here. My, my says different, Pastor. A ver. Chapter NIV eight. is on uh, the NIV. Uh, yep. Yep. Where are you guys right. at? Uh, cha uh, verse, Matthew, uh, Matthew chapter 10. Okay. okay. Verse 29. 29. Yeah. Okay. And 30. Right. I'm there. Yeah. Mine says, Are two sparrows not sold for an Assyrian? And yet, not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. Apart from your father, see, so mm -hmm. so apart from your father, like he has to say so. Yes, your father is aware. Apart from your father, like you know, without God, it doesn't happen. It's either he he either lets it or he doesn't. Apart from him, yeah, nothing happens by chance, right? I mean, yeah. that's what the Bible doesn't teach luck. The Bible teaches that a blessing, and the Bible teaches that God is where He's the Father is, is very aware of what takes place. Mm -hmm. Amen. Apart from apart apart from your Father's will, or apart from your Father, como dice Lerni, it's the same thing. <laughs> and I'll look at First Corinthians chapter four, verse seven. First Corinthians First, chapter four, seven. First Corinthians chapter four, verse 
Amen. Four, four seven. Correct. But First Corinthians chapter four verse seven says, in the New King James version, "For who makes you different from another, and what do you have that you did not receive? Now, if you did indeed receive it, why do you boast as if you had not received it?" What does that teach us? It teaches that it teaches that you received it, but then you want the credit because <laughs> it was the Lord who gave it to you. <laughs> you know, right. everything, everything that we give, He gives us. And everything that we receive, we receive it from Him. Mm -hmm. You know, because we might think that, hey, you know what? Pues yo me la gané esta feria, and hey, it belongs to me. No, you right. receive. Because God's given you the strength to make that wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18 says, You shall remember the Lord your God, for he has given you the what? The strength to, oh, make, right. to make that wealth. God gave you the health and the ability to make that wealth. The brain that he get created, the brain, our, our, you know, he gives us the wisdom, the, all the abilities, right? All the abilities. And first yeah. grade, the things come from above. Come on. All good things come from above. Amen. First Corinthians uh, 4, 7, for who makes you differ from another? <laughs> but you what know, do you have that you did not receive? What do you have? What do you have right now in your position that you did not receive? You right? received. You, you what, know, what, you, what? Huh? What's the question? No, it's right here. Look, first Corinthians chapter four, verse seven. Que dice? Well, who right. makes you differ from another? Who makes you differ from another? And what do you have that you did not receive? Stop right now, there. Stop right there. Think about that sentence. What do what you do have? You yeah, that's true, right? What do you have that you didn't receive? You didn't just get it yourself. You <laughs> received everything we have from yeah. the food on our table, from the fingers on our hand, from the eyes that we look at. We didn't just have it. We received it through the creator who gives all good things. All things good, rather. Why do you boast as if you didn't have it? Why do you boast as if you had not received it? Right, because he wants to take the credit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you didn't receive it, then well, how did you get it then? Yeah, it's like driving your... It's like but driving... Harley, you know, by the grace of God, come on, somebody. That's right. <laughs> by the grace of God, there go I. Period. <laughs> I breathe by the grace of God. I exist by the grace of God. I have a job by the grace of God. I have a roof over my head by the grace of God. I have a vehicle and gas in it and t four tires on each. <laughs> by the grace of God, come on. It was by the grace of God that I got my motorcycle when I did. Come on, you I know, have a because... By the grace and of I, God. And I use it unto him, you know? Right? Yeah. When I, I mean, jump on that, when I jump on my bike, every time I pray and thank God that I have a bike, thanks for blessing the bike, put a hedge of protection around my bike, and help me to minister in whatever way I can to everybody that I come in contact with. Right? Amen. Amen. You know, a lot of things that we wish we had, that we prayed for, that we had, we already have. <laughs> right. You know, things that we prayed for, that we wish we had, we already have it. <laughs> mm -hmm. ¿Qué pasa? Queremos más. Y quer you know, we want to take the credit. No, you don't get no credit, bro. <laughs> God gets the glory. And mm -hmm. everything. And, and the things that we have, Pastor, that we receive by the grace of God, and the things that we want... And the things that we need, you know, a lot of things that we want are things that we think we need, but really we know what we need. We need Jesus and more Jesus and more Jesus, more Jesus. And the more Jesus we have, the more peace we'll have, the more wisdom we'll have, the more patience we'll have, the more self-control we'll have, the more of everything that we have, you know. Uh, the, the more money we'll have, no, hold on, hold on, hold on. It don't work like that. You know, if you want money so much, then that's that's a desire within more than just a necessity. It's a, 
a, a kind of a, a love, you know, and what is the root of all evil? The love for money. So we don't want money. We want what we, we want what we need. Amen. That's the God. And that's God. Because God has all the gold, all the silver, a thousand cattle on a thousand hills, you know. If you have not because you asked not, he gives liberally to those who ask for it. Amen. <laughs> I tithe and you'll be okay. Yep, that's right, brother. Amen. 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 And then verses three to five, like our like I wrote the introduction. In uh same chapter. Pastor First Corinthians? Uh, no, uh, back to 127, Psalm 127. Uh, Psalm 126. 127. 127. Verses 3 to 5. Or even, even 3. Behold. Or, Psalm 26, 126, Pastor? 127. 127, yes. Yeah, same thing. Verse three to five. Behold, <laughs> behold, children are a gift of the Lord. Where'd you see that? The fruit, the fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. How blessed is a man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be ashamed when they speak with their enemies in the gate. Right. Think about it. You know, like I wrote the introduction, the psalmist here makes kids sound like they're wonderful little creatures. But I have, but, uh, but to many <clears throat> that have children don't always seem to be a blessing. Because <clears throat> when they make mistakes, they cause you grief and sorrow. So we tend to think that only good children can be a blessing. But note verses three to five contains no conditional statement like that. So I am not blessed if if I have good children. No, I am I am I have children, therefore I am blessed. Children are not a blessing if they're good children. Right? Right. Children are not a blessing if they are good children. Children are a blessing, period. And why? Because if the Lord says my children are are a blessing, then I will see them as a blessing no matter what. And they do uh, no matter what, no matter what they do, and they deserve my attention, right? But the fact that God builds the house and guards the walls <laughs> in my sleep means I can I can rest assured, you know, because a lot of times we sleep and we're wondering about our children, they're out there or whatever, you know. <laughs> but notice what notice what notice that in the end of uh, verse two, the end the last sentence of verse two. For so he gives his beloved sleep. Right. For so he gives his beloved sleep, right? So once again, the fact that God builds houses and guards walls in my sleep means I can rest assured. If a parent plants, if a parent plants even a small seed of faith in their children's heart, God can cause it to grow. God can cause it to grow, right? First Corinthians 3 6 says. Yeah. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave it the increase. All you have to do is sow a little bit of good seed to your children, and God can cause it to grow. Amen. He can save each one of them according to their particular situation and particular need. Even if they wonder from the faith or wonder from the truth, don't stress out. I will pray for them. In my sadness, yet have perfect peace in my heart. So Amen. you pray, trusting in God, knowing that he sowed the good seed. You can rest assured because he gives. That's why it says right here. So it says it is in vain for you to rise up early. You know what's this, what's verse two talking about? It's talking about overworking yourself Ooh. to have that wealth, to have that safety. But God said it's a vain, it's in vain, it's a sin to overwork yourself. 
That's why to eat the bread, to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. It's a bread of sorrows because you're overworking yourself. Mm. <clears throat> for he gives, for so he gives his beloved sleep. <laughs> You can't even sleep, man. You're all worried about okay, this and that and this and that because, you know, you want to make sure you have a good future, but God's got your future, man. Amen. It's not all. I thought it was always about work, too, you know? Mm -hmm. I thought it was, okay, well, I have to pay this and I have to pay that. And I told my wife, hey, well, you told me I have to pay this, I have to pay that. So I was always working myself. <laughs> you know, when my <laughs> daughter, I remember, I had, I, had, I had my second daughter and I was working... I'm uh, working at my day job and then I would after my day job I would go to my dad's shop and do my do my side jobs so some, one time, time, sometimes I wouldn't get home till like one two o'clock in the morning and then there I am eight o'clock in the morning going to my day job and then get out and go do my other job and my daughter my second daughter that was born she she didn't see her dad and my wife goes hey hey come with this we, we, we gotta we gotta quit one of your jobs you gotta do either do your side job or do your day job and I brought it before the Lord, and I said, the Lord goes, Junior, stop it. Just ask your dad if he lets you work there, and not only. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, and I told my boss, I go, hey, man, I'm quitting. I got to quit. I just, I go, if you want to, a week or two weeks, you know, whatever, find yourself another mechanic. He goes, hey, man, I'll pay you double. I'll pay you double, what, you know, what I'm paying you. I go, what? He goes, yeah, I'll pay you double, man. I really need you. I go, no. I go, well, let me see. He was always convincing me. But the Lord said, no, Junior, you need to quit this job. Your daughter, your daughter needs you. You're overworking yourself. That's why it says right here. Verse two says it is it is a vain, it is, it is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. It's a bread of sorrows because your, your family's suffering, you're suffering. Mm -hmm. my, my, fam my family was happy. <laughs> I guess. I, I, did, I, I did 27, 24 in one week. Yeah, but the Lord says it's in vain. For you you know what makes me yeah, think of my job now? Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, it was, I, I just put, I just, uh, I just put up. I uh, took huh? home 37000 a, a week. Yeah. I just put a, a, a slip in for a, a, my availability because I'm wanting Thursdays <laughs> off uh, so I can do worship at church. And they said, well, you know, if you do that, uh, you're going to lose hours because your availability is going to mess you up uh, if you want those. Because I get Sunday off and, and uh, Tuesday off. But uh, as soon as I start doing worship, uh, my, the, my past, they were happy on Thursday night. And then my after that, my schedule changed from uh, Thursday nights off to Tuesday nights off. And I go, wow. So, um me and my wife, we discussed it. I go, you know, babe, the Lord's telling me he's going to take care of us. Uh, if I get 32 hours a week or they try to thread me with my, you know, losing hours, I know God's going to have our back. You know, we're, we're faithful tithers and uh, we're going to trust the Lord that he's going to take care of it. You know, not worry about it like, oh, well, I better not. I No, I really want to be worshiping on Thursday nights and be attending service, you know. So, uh, you know, the Lord. The Lord will make a way, you know. The Lord will make a way. Would you work twenty four seven or what? No, I work uh, from eleven a.m. to eight p.m. Uh, Wednesday through Saturday, and then also Monday. So it's five days a week. I get off Sunday and uh, Tuesday, and Sunday's great. I used to have to come in after service, but now I get the whole uh, Sunday off, and. Um, but then I go back to work Monday, eight hours, and it's always closing shift, uh, Brother Gus. So I get off at eight o'clock. Service is at seven o'clock. So I, I'm not able to make service. You know, some people work. My hours are. I'm a closer at the automotive at Walmart, mm -hmm. and, and so I don't. You know, and um, like I said, my schedule was all messed up. I wasn't getting forty hours. I was getting like 32, 36 hours a week, and I kept pressing to try to get forty hours a week. Well, they get now. I get the forty hours a week. I have a big schedule: uh, Sundays and Tuesdays off, uh, eleven a.m. to eight p.m. But everything's closed by the time I can't take care of no business other other than Tuesday 
during the day, I take care of doctor appointments and uh, business appointments and what have you, and try to work in my day off with my wife and my family. But uh, I really want the Thursday. I, I'll work Saturday. I'll work on the Sabbath. God forgive me. But I want Thursdays off and Sundays off so I can go to services. Sabbath is Sunday. Well, yeah, but well, you know, they, they say the Sabbath on Saturday, you know, but uh, I never heard of the Sabbath being on Sunday. I thought it was the Sabbath was Saturday. And Sunday was a day of that. I don't want to get into what they say about worshiping the sun god, uh, Horus, on a Sunday. That's, that he, that's, that's the world. That's not that, God. That's not the Bible. So Sunday is uh, the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I, I want to get Thursdays off, you know, and um, uh, I'll, I'll be working less hours. Maybe, but I don't think really, I, I don't, I shouldn't say that I'll be working less hours because I really don't believe that they're going to cut my hours. I think it's the enemy trying to lie to me. So it will discourage me not to even attempt to try to get Thursdays off. I'm not afraid of it. I know God's got my back, like I said. So I'm going to, I don't mind. I'm going to be double minded, like uh, wishy washy. I've been told, uh, you know, let my yes be yes and my no be no. You right? Don't be no. <laughs> well, being retired, it, you don't make that much money. Be retired. I'm retired. Uh, uh, all I make is $3,000 a month. Yeah, I'm 62 and I'm going to work as long as I can. Well, I'm 62 also, but yeah. I got I got sick and I, I can't work till I'm 70. If I if mm. I want to go back because I retired mm. at three years ago mm. so, because I got sick. So mm. now I got to wait till I'm 70 years old before I can go back to work again. Mm. Uh, because if I do, then they'll take it all away. What I'm getting oh, right now. Yeah, that's the government. Um, no, my retirement. My retirement. Yeah. Oh. They can stop it. Oh, I see. Was it some type of union? Yeah, I was in Union Local 12, okay. Upper Engineers. Okay. All right. Well, you're blessed that you have that. I, I didn't work for a lot of years, Gus. I was just, you know, screwball, man, messing up and uh, lost. You know what I mean? So I did. I wasn't responsible to hold a job like you. most of you guys, you know, that worked, you know, and supporting your family, being responsible. I was just out there messing around and, uh, you know, basically selfish. But these past few years, been serving the Lord and serving my life to Him, and He's turned me around. You know, so, mm -hmm. I'm a late bloomer, but <laughs> sorry, late, but, you know, yeah, yeah, you found the Lord. That's more important than your job. Amen. Amen. Than anything, because yeah, I I, I worked since I was what, sixteen years old, seventeen years uh -huh. old. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry, eighteen years old. Out of school, and never stopped till I was right now. That's kind of like my brother David. He always worked. He always worked. Yeah, good jobs and would work. You know, mm -hmm. of course, he's serving the Lord now in heaven. You know, but as we all will be one day, and uh, not have to worry about pensions and and all that stuff that we have to have be concerned about here, but. All we have to be concerned about is having our names written in the Lamb's Book of Life, like you said, Gus. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're saved. You know, Pastor. That's right. <laughs> Into that one. Yeah. So once again, the behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Right? The sovereignty of God in verses uh, 1. And three <clears throat> are a blessing, the blessing of a children. God gives to those he loves, even while they sleep. He gives not because of their effort, but because he just likes giving gifts. One of the gifts he gives is children, but children are not earned. You know, I was thinking about that, you know, children, you know, because you might, you know, some people might think it was, um, children are um you know because you know there's some people that wish they can have children right and the yeah. people that have children wish they never had children <laughs> oh my God. you know what i mean I, I mean that's why i like that song uh by samuel hernandez 
you know, he says, a Dios no, que, no hay que entenderlo, hay que obedecerlo. Mm. You know, like that statement of, that says that it, our, our, it's not our job to, to understand God's will, but to accept God's will. Amen. You know, but that song with Samuel Hernandez, a Dios no hay que entenderlo, hay que obedecerlo. You know, it kind of like goes with that. It's mm -hmm. not to understand God's will, but to accept it, you know? Amen. But in Spanish, it says, it's not our job to 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 understand him, but but to but to be obedient to him. Mm. But to obey. To obey. Mm. Right? Amen. Obedecerlo. Hay que obedecerlo, right? A Dios no hay que entender. Oh. Yeah, over the set is obey. You know, because he says Isaiah 50, Isaiah 55, verse 8. He says, My ways are not with ways. You know, no, my thoughts are your thoughts. As far right. as the heaven and the earth, so are my ways. And mm -hmm. you're <laughs> yeah. And, and, and yeah. Yeah. We long speaking, ways. <laughs> I'm, I'm speaking that like we don't understand these things, but just understand this that God's ways are higher and we'll never understand to the point of trying to, but I'm sure he will give us the wisdom to. Uh, like you said, Pastor, accept it, you know, and uh, you know, just like the song that it says, you know, about the father, you're a good, good father, that's who you are, and he is a good father. But yeah. does he sing to us? Does God sing to us, you're a good, good child, that's who you are, you know, are we a good child? Are we, are we obeying him? Are we obeying our father? Well, I'm sorry to break it up to you guys, but. Earlier, when I started the class, I said that one of the verses that has been hitting me hard was this: "Love your na love your neighbor like you love your like you love yourself." So the question here is: Do we love ourselves? And where it says, if you you get up early, if you go to sleep late and you get up early, that's not loving yourself because you're not giving your body enough rest. That's one. And if we are obeying His commandments, we're not obeying Him because it's already one o'clock and we're and we're staying up late. <laughs> you would bring that one up. <laughs> you no, know, it's actually it's actually it's twelve thirty five on the he, East Coast he, over he, in Fullerton. He picks and chooses his verses. Hey, I'm I'm yeah, just following know. orders, brother, and I'm here to hey, guys, bring it to your guys' attention. Hey, my brothers, I'm gonna go to bed, man. Get out of here. I, wait, I gotta wake up in three hours, so uh, I love all you guys. <laughs> She, I appreciate amen. the word of God, yeah. But um, <laughs> hey, you guys go with God, man. Just go with God, and it's all gonna work out. Whatever we got on our plate is gonna work out. It was good to see you, Gus. Good to see you, Ernie, Richard. Hey, Randy. Pleasure's here. Robert. Hey, Randy. Good to see you. I love all you guys. You haven't seen Robert in a long time. Heck yeah, Robert. I love that mustache. That's what I keep telling him. I'm jealous. <laughs> it's the it's the face, it's the face that I'm wondering about. And his black and his black hair. And, and his hair. <laughs> I know, but man. Down, I mean, don't don't let Robert tell you he's over 50 because you know he's only 30, right? I don't know how old he is. I'm, I'm in my 60s, so I'm in my 60s too. Get out of here, Robert. Where? I'm, I'm he sixty-seven. All black. He doesn't have no gray hair. Yeah, he ain't sixty. You're what? Sixty-seven. What? No way. Yep, sixty-seven. Are you serious? Oh my God. Hey, Robert, do you got your hair? God's favor on you, brother. No, I don't have any. I'm twenty-three. I'm twenty-three. <laughs> sixty-seven. <laughs> yes. You're five years older than me. I look like. 20 years older than you. Mm -hmm. Got all your hair is still black? <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I don't dye my hair. Are you married? I was married. I got I uh, married twice. That's, that's why you have your black hair and black and a long lot of it. <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't know, but I, that's where I stand right now. <laughs> wow, brother, you look good. <laughs> I would have never guessed that. Yeah, he does. He look. You look real good, Robert. No, thank he you. Was married, he was yeah, married. He was married to two yeah, girls. You look like a champ. Like you're God's favorite. <laughs> he was married to two to two women, and both of the women told him, "They said, hey, uh, you're gonna have to get rid of that car." 
and uh, for some reason, he ended up misunderstanding them and got rid of them instead. <laughs> That's a <red. laughs> That's, you're not You're not married anymore. Huh? Hey, I love you guys. I love you, Robert. Hey, I'm going to see you back. Take it easy, All right, man. All right, All right, guys, guys. That's, that's amazing, Robert. Yeah. To I love all you guys. Yeah. You look and you're 67. <laughs> hey, Junior, I'll, I'll catch you later, Junior. All right, Colonel. Gracias. All right, Colonel. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll talk to you guys soon, okay? Go, go sleep. Go sleep. Okay. You got to go to work. <laughs> oh, yeah. I get a stay right, home, so I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Remember, it is vain to wake up early, eh? <laughs> See you later, Ernie. I love you, man. I get up at five in the morning every day. I try to later, brother. By the time I eat breakfast. Okay, we'll have we'll have Hermano Richard pray us out. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Fall asleep. Yeah, I know. Oh, right? yeah. As soon as Brad said it again. No, but Lord, we just come before you, Lord, with grateful hearts, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for being our God, Lord. We cried out to you at all different times, Lord. Uh, sometimes we cried out, Lord, and, and you've always heard us. But, Lord, the time that we needed you the most, and we meant it with all our heart, with all our soul, Lord, you were there for us, Lord. And we thank you for being our God. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We thank you for our salvation. We're, we're grateful hearts, Lord. We thank you for the Word, Lord. The Word, Lord, that, that saves, Lord. The Word that's alive and active, Lord. The word, Lord, like a two-edged sword that cuts through bone and marrow, as we spoke earlier, that will divide, Lord. They won't bring peace, peace, Lord, but you are the king and the prince of peace, Lord. And we thank you for the peace that you've given us that surpasses all understanding, Lord. Yes. Lord, uh, we'll need that peace, Lord, as we go on through this journey, Lord, through this, this race that we run, Lord, Father God. Uh, we fall down sometimes, but we get back up because we know the finish line is you, Lord. Yes. You are the, the Omega, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for the word tonight, Lord. As little children, Lord, we were to our parents, Lord, and we are your children, Lord. We're your sheepfold, Lord, and we just pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we endure and we persevere, Lord, Father God, to get that prize, Lord, to finish the race, Lord. And hear the words, Lord, that we'd love to hear from you, Lord. Welcome into your to your rest, faithful and good servant, Lord. Thank you for being faithful and a good father to us, a good shepherd to us, a good provider and healer and all the things that are good yes, from us. We thank, thank you, Lord. You. Pastor Junior, uh, Brother Gus, Brother Adolfo, Brother Ernie, Big Randy, Robert, Lord, join us, Lord, and, and all the brothers that come, Lord. And thank you for the brothers that are going to be coming, Lord. Thank you for all the souls, Lord, that you're going to bring into our path, Lord, that we could sow the good seed, Lord, Father God. Make yeah. it fertile ground, Lord. And thank you for our families, Lord, our children, our wives, Lord. Lord, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for the for the Holy Spirit that's joined us tonight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, thank you. We're three gathered in your name. There you are in the midst. So, Lord, we spoke of rest, Lord. And Father God, we ask and pray for a multiple, multiplied rest, Lord, that we could wake up refreshed, Lord, but also, Lord, with uh, a refreshing of our spirit, of our soul, Lord, the wisdom, Lord, the understanding, Lord, of what was spoken tonight, Lord, and Father God, Psalm 127, Lord, Lord, that, that yes. the children, Lord, are good, Lord, but we're, Lord, Father God, how we have children, Lord, and, and whether or not they're good or not, Lord, whether we were good or not children, Lord. Lord, we are a blessing. We are blessed by you. And Lord, Father, we're blessed by others. So let our children be a blessing, Lord, to others, Lord, because they're a blessing to us, Lord. Thank you for Pastor Junior as he brings insight, knowledge, and wisdom, Lord. And Father God, a little bit of laughter and fun too, Lord, because Lord, laughter is good for the heart, Lord. It's good medicine. So thank you, yes. Jesus. In your precious name, we pray, Lord, till the next week lord till the next study lord and thank you for the little uh nuggets that we get throughout the week that sustains us lord through uh pastor jr's ministry lord thank you for the listener tonight lord thank you for the writer the ready writer uh, the ready pen of a writer lord as in book and in john that we take note lord as pastor jr says take notice and take note because lord they're nuggets they're gold nuggets father god 
We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise for you are worthy. In Jesus' mighty name, we say amen and amen. 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 Thank wow, you, Pastor. Amen. Spoken. Hallelujah. Glad, glad to see you again, Robert. Okay, guys. Glad, 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 well, I glad see you. Come. Come. Thank you. I'll see you later. Huh? Love you, what guys. With you guys, man. Hey, Randy. Love you guys. See you later. Love you guys. Good night. Love you, Pastor. Yes, love good you night. Too. Yeah, we love you too, Pastor. Thanks for yeah, hanging. Yeah. Uh, look at her. Pastor, sent me a bunch you. of hearts. Man, that's just... <laughs> uh, that, uh, yeah. All, All right. right. Have a good one. Good night, guys. God bless you.